coming to get you, Barbara. Stop it! You're ignorant! They're coming for you, Barbara. Stop it! You're acting like a child! They're coming for you! They're coming to get you, Barbara. That woke you up, didn't it? If anybody was snoozing, that woke them up. I'm telling you. How's everybody doing tonight? Hello and welcome to this special Sunday night stream. I am joined by two incredible special guests to discuss a topic that is very near and dear to my heart. Movies that everyone hates, but we love. So we've got some interesting lists for you all. Let me do some shout outs here before we get the ball rolling. Uh, Nico, thank you for the $10 super chat. That's very kind of you. Pizza, Coke, Piz, and Pals. That spells Sunday night to me. Right on. Thank you, Nico. Appreciate that. <clears throat> what kind of pizza are we talking about here? Are we talking, you, you got to give us toppings. You can't just say pizza. We, we, we want to know toppings. The whole nine. But thank you. Uh, we've got RJ Skarinki in the chat with us tonight. What's up, RJ? We got Usu, Saturn Video, Return of the Disc. We've got Olivia. We've got Gustavo, Redbeard, DJ, Ross Jordan, Davo. What's up, Davo? Geriatric Geek, how you doing tonight? Hollywood Jake Time Walker. That is, I, I like that name. We've got uh, Slasher Boy Network. We've got Saturn Video, Boogie Manny, Joe Bob. Got yeah, Dave Twinkie593 over on Twitch. Taco Bela Lagosi. What's up? Rockin' Roger. How are you? Uh, Chad Lyons fan. Hello. Manny, how are you? <clears throat> okay. Sausage, green peppers, double pepperoni. That's a good, that's a good pizza pie. That's a very good pizza pie. Well, thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate it very much. Uh, let's go ahead and get the ball rolling here. Let me bring on my special guests. My first guest is a writer, a director, an editor. He is the twisted, sick mind behind movies like The Dead Hate the Living, The Hills Run Red, and um, most recently, Puppet Master, Dr. Death, which Jeremy and I both give two big thumbs up to. I'm talking about none other than Dave Parker. What's up, Dave? Oh, you're, you're muted. No, no there no. you are. There I'm not. <laughs> uh, hey, thanks for having me on. Uh, great to be back. I'm yeah, it's good excited to see about this. Yeah, it's good to see you. I'm glad you could uh, be here and hang out with us tonight. Hope you're, hope you're doing well. Absolutely. Doing great. Doing awesome. Great. Awesome. Well, I know you, you know, we, we, we just, I just mentioned Dr. Death. Have you got any other projects in the works that you can, you want to? Uh, not at the moment. I mean, I, I, like I did, uh, I did a short film for, I'm part of this uh, short film group called Just Scare Me, which you can find on Facebook. And I just did a, a short for that. So that was sort of the newest thing. It's just for us to like sort of practice like gym class and keep our chops up and experiment and try different things. So this time I did a, uh, a fake teaser trailer in like the vein of those eighties trailers where stuff was shot specifically before the movie was ever made to like sell the movie. So 
I did that. It's called Teaser. That's the newest thing. And then just uh, writing and working on. I, I'm editing on a TV show right now. Uh, that's all like paranormal and and aliens and you know weird phenomena like that. So that's what's keeping me busy right now. Very cool. Very cool. And, and that in that trailer was is 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 very cool. By the way, it's fun so, for what yeah. for what it is. Yeah, it's very cool. Very cool. But again, thanks, Dave, for being here. Always a pleasure, sir. Sure. Yeah. Also joining me tonight, he is a producer, he's an author, he's a film historian, he's one of the nicest fellas I know. He is the man behind this epic tome to Friday the 13th and the upcoming 90s horror book, which is going to be, I think, like three or four of these. You see how wow. big this is? The 90s one's going to be like three of these. Okay. So clear off some shelf space. <laughs> I'm talking about the great Peter Brackey. What's oh, up? Oh, you, you are too kind. You are too kind. Thank you guys. Thanks, Piz. Hey, wow. He changed angles into his <laughs> did, another angle of his fake, mansion. It's my fake background, my mansion. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the palatial <laughs> estate of Peter Brackey yes. back there. My goodness. I'm renting Barry Manilow's house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have horrible artwork behind me, so I'm like, I'll put the fake back then. Obviously, no one's going to believe it's real, so it's all good. <laughs> well, well, how have you been, man? Uh, pretty good, yeah. Just uh, chugging through. I can't believe it's almost end of March. Um, thank you for the nice introduction. I'm working on stuff. Yes, the big volumes are moving ahead, so I hope it's worth the wait. But, uh, yeah. What, what, what is... The... What are you comfortable with sharing about the 90s book? Um, we're about to shoot the book cover for the first one. So that's been a lot of fun getting that together. Um, it's hard because like a Chris like memories cover, I thought came out really well. So you want to do something, you know, cool like that. Um, so it's just been a little bit of a challenge um, because uh, unlike Jason, they never trademarked the hockey mask that ghost faces up there. Actually, those are trademarks. So it's a little more difficult you know to come up and get everything organized and cleared um a couple cool things um i guess i can announce um uh covid had some restrictions um you just couldn't really go to like studios and like find cool stuff we were able to kind of finally get to the vaults of like paramount and stuff um and so dug up some never before seen photos from the movies which i think i'm excited about that people are currently get to see so so yeah a lot of work but it's been going pretty well so i just apologize it's taken so long who for the five people that are waiting for it. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, just the five. Just the five. <laughs> yeah, just the five. I'm curious what um what made you choose the nineties and do you think it was like enough had been said about the eighties? Yeah, that, you know, I love the nineties. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough, you know, with they like um there's just so many issues of various things, various things that come up in the past. Um like ideas of other franchises and stuff. It's just, it's really hard. Like I, I just can't think of an eighties movie that really hasn't been dissected where <laughs> is there not, you know, is there enough for a book, you know, to do a book on it? So I thought nineties would be a lot of fun. Um, and it's also fun to do something that like, like when Friday 13th, when I had Chris like memories, it was kind of, kind of the topic of today. Like it's kind of hated. Like it was looked at, like it was a shitty franchise, right? There was Halloween and Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday 13th was like the low rent version and so, like, I think a lot of people hate the 90s. <laughs> there is some hatred to it. So it's always fun to kind of explore something and hopefully shed some, shed some, shed some new light on it. Um, um, but it's always like you start, I don't know how you are, Dave, like you start something and it seems like a great idea. And then when you're in it, you're like, why the hell did I sign on to this? It's so much Every work. Time. You know? Every yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> it always seems fun at the beginning. Like, yeah. The dark night of the soul where you're going, oh, why, oh, why? why this? Yeah, and then you can't quit. And, and then you, you have the voice from Amityville just saying, get out. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> totally, totally. But you're, so. but, you're, but you're too deep in at that point. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Too deep. yeah. Hmm. Isn't that a cheesy song? And who sings that? In two snare song? Genesis. Oh, oh, yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Okay. <laughs> but but yeah. I, there's a lot of people looking forward to that book every now i'm telling you oh, every so cool. often i get a number of people asking whatever what, what's where's what's yeah where's peter's book where's the 90s book what, what, it is up? that is two volumes now because there's just too much for one book so now between the two books it's over 300 and some interviews so it's crazy i mean that dr G the giggles chapter alone exactly oh. alone <laughs> oh well you can't cover that's a hard thing too like you know so much directed video direct like 
you know ever remembers right all the 90s like what was the Paris Hilton one? She was on. Remember that was that was that Nine Lives or something like that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's all those all those rip. I mean, you can't cover all those. I don't think anyone. So like figuring out what to cover was tough too. So I mean, because that was like the real big direct to video era. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh god. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The curve. What was the other one? There were so many of those. Well, then there's the awful sequels like I'll Always Know What You Did Last Summer, Urban Legend. Right. 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 Yeah, it starts really going off the rails. So, yeah, yeah. What a, what a time it was to be a horror fan back then. Yeah, especially, <laughs> yeah. especially, especially hanging out in the video store. You did the, the, oh, it, yeah. it was just a flood of those scream style direct to video. You know, some of them weren't bad, and then some of them were really bad. Really bad. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's well, no one love. The most, yeah, one of the most fun one of the few done things I discovered was they actually had a name. Remember that poster, like the screen poster started all with the name, you know, the faces across. Uh-huh. Um, they actually named for they called it the Rushmore. And that was this, this the photographic style. So everyone was like, we have to have our own Rushmore. So we have to have our stars on the cover and mm-hmm. every fucking cover. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> every mm-hmm. dimension film. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, uh, quickly speaking of uh i know the i know what you did last summer franchise mm-hmm. do you guys know that freddie prince jr now has a horror podcast yeah he did, I, that did and, not it's, know. and it's really good he really knows his stuff yeah. which is very surprising that's cool yeah i think the wow. first episode was in i know what you did summer yeah. yeah they're actually doing another a, a, a new i know what you did last summer with freddie yeah. and well I think, he denies it, that yeah. he's been asked oh okay Okay. Yeah. He has right. like, no one's called me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, no one's see. called him to tell him that he can he can say that, that it's happening. Yeah. No, no one's called uh, him to tell him that he's in it. According yeah. Yeah. to him. Yeah. So, we'll see. <laughs> what would that one be called? I know what you did last summer, thirty years ago. I, I think there's going to be because there, it's going to be a requel, right? So it's supposed to have Jennifer Love Hewitt and Freddie Prinze. I'm sure there'll be the parents, the adults. Um. I wonder if like, I'll just be called it. I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I know. I know about last summer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just hope Brandy geez. comes back. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Brandy. <laughs> we can we can keep our fingers crossed for yeah. Brandy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, geez. Um oh, I want Jack Black to come back. I mean, just tell oh, yeah. his twin brother. <laughs> Somehow, I don't know if that's going to happen, but we'll... Probably not. He smoked so much weed that yeah. it, it somehow preserved his insides so that when like, the yeah. thing went in him, it just it, you know just didn't really yeah. even phase him that much. Yeah. So yeah. That know. performance, um, uh, what's the word? I think it would be called problematic today. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> hey, but I'll give that one props. At least they, they uh, put Jeff Combs in it. So That's true. Yeah. I actually interviewed him for my book. It was a lot of fun. So yeah, he that. he's great. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, before we dive into the topic tonight, have you guys seen any good movies or bad movies you wanna you wanna throw out there? Um, I don't watch bad movies. Uh, <laughs> I try. I, I did watch Skin and Marink. Skin and Marink. Uh-huh. You, you, uh huh. You started to say I tried to, and then <laughs> I watched. <laughs> I, uh, I thought it, I found it relaxing. And I fell asleep, so I got home. I mean, I was like, "This is nice." Like the sounds and the droning. Like uh, I don't know what <laughs> that means. Every now and then, a weird like, rrr, rrr, rrr. yeah, yeah. I woke up I'm like, oh yeah. So I saw that. I, <laughs> I saw Scream I, Six, of course. But, uh, yeah. Did Did you see Skin of Marie, Dave? Uh, I haven't watched it yet. No, because okay. I know it's one of those things where I'm going to have to just sit and yeah. really watch it and i just haven't been i haven't been in the mood yeah yeah for for something that i know is going to test my patience you have to be in the mood i was not in the well i don't uh, you have to be in the a, mood. yeah i'm not sure what the mood the mood is but i tried watching it late one night and i i think i made it through about 15 minutes and i was just uh, uh you know it's because right. it's just static shots of a door frame mm-hmm. of the yeah. carpet of of the wall it's just like with like this little white noise hum under it yeah. all it was so I... relaxing like oh this is like an airplane or you're you know mm-hmm. it, it's mm-hmm. like one of those asmr videos you put on at night to, to help you fall asleep you know it's, yeah, yeah. It's quite yeah. i thought maybe oh, I did. Like early 70s with lsd you drop lsd and launch it maybe, maybe. 
I did. I did go to the theater last week, but I went and saw an old movie called Anguish, which is from '87, oh, yeah. I believe. It's a Spanish film with Michael Lerner and Zelda Rubinstein, mm -hmm. and it's really, really cool. And it was mm -hmm. it's interesting because it, not to spoil it, but it's it's kind of a movie that takes place with people watching a movie in a theater, and then then you're in a theater watching it, so it has this weird sort of. Mm -hmm doubling back kind of feel to it when you watch it in a theater it's very cool mm. okay. okay i'm gonna add it to my list yeah. interesting okay i've added it to and my the director's list. name was biggest luna biggest mm. luna that's right yeah yeah no it's a good it's a good movie it's um kind of underrated i think very very much so yeah cool cool uh and, and peter i know you said you saw scream six your thoughts yeah. Um, you know, no spoilers or anything. Um, you know, it's tough. I, I, I feel like once you get to the sixth entry of any horror franchise, you just kind of have to accept it's inherently. I mean, how many ghost faces? How many people are going to be triggered by this crime in Woodsboro twenty six years ago? <laughs> I mean, we've had ten ghost faces. So um, you know, you just let it go. It's uh, but it has a, a couple really good sequences. I thought a couple very suspenseful sequences. Um, uh, was it my favorite kill reveal or my favorite opening sequence? No, of the series. No, I don't think so. So, um, you yeah, know, but my expectations were down there. So, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. but, but some people, if people seem like it's going to make over 100 million, there will be a Scream 7. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just happy horror is doing well and people are going to the theater to see it. So that's cool. Yeah. But also, it's for a younger generation. You know, it's not for me. Like, I see younger kids and they love the new characters. Like, they love Sam and Jenna Ortega. Like, so that's cool. You know, that's cool. I mean, yeah. Dave, did you see it? I did not see it yet. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'll probably wait until it it comes mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. on home video. And I, I just um I wasn't I wasn't a huge fan of five. I'm mm -hmm. I, the funny thing is I'm not a huge fan. I like I I love one, mm -hmm. and I like a couple moments in two, and that's really about it. So mm -hmm. again, but I'm like Peter. I'm glad that it's doing well and it keeps people's interest in the genre and it keeps showing. The studios that hey these make money mm -hmm. um for me it's uh, for me i'm now just i'm just waiting for evil dead rise because i just that's more my yeah. kind of thing gotcha. yeah mm -hmm. yeah definitely looking forward to that for sure uh toronto freddy nobody's been canceled yet but it's still early <laughs> we'll work it's, on that we'll try yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get there i'm sure someone who we'll doesn't get... like grand pianos they're gonna yeah. come out <laughs> well actually <laughs> who are watching this once they see my five selections i will by them so. <laughs> yeah but then we all will be yeah yeah uh, uh, dave i know you saw john wick four and you I said did i saw that today which was fantastic i just I, I love that series and and you do sort of go well how many people are there left in the world to kill and how can <laughs> they continue the story and for me it works and for a lot of people because it was a packed theater yeah. it was an imax it was it was really and they just managed to figure out a way to up the 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 action and everything and and donnie yen is in it who's absolutely fantastic you know really great addition to the the movies weird weird enough characters and everything else it's it's massive it's a it's a massive you know but still but still about one guy so it's not massive in the scale of like a mission impossible movie it's but the action is on a on a very different level yeah, and it's, it's already really made what eighty something million dollars. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, yeah. And it's a cool series because that's an example of a franchise that's gotten more popular. The first one wasn't a huge hit necessarily. No, so, it was a real sleeper kind of movie yeah. at first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wild. That's cool. Oh, um, I did see Winnie the Pooh: Blood and Honey, and I oh, highly yeah. recommend it. I, I know you. I think that's on your list tonight, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> it could be. It, it really could be. Yeah. It really, it's, really could. You be. are the first uh, positive that I've actually heard. Oh, really? Okay. Of anyone mm -hmm. from from saying it. Oh, but I wanted to tell you, um, those masks. Those are uh, silicone masks from a company called Immortal Masks. So they are actually prosthetics for Pooh and and Piglet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But those guys are great. But uh, and I know they're doing another one. They are. Yeah, I thought the. Are I, they? Oh, the, really? oh God. <laughs> already, yeah. The the poo mask was really good. 
the poo mask was really good. And like when you see it, when you see Winnie the Pooh splattered in blood mm-hmm. and like dr- like drooling honey, like you, like okay, <laughs> you know you're in for you're in for something different. You know I, what I mean? I, it, look, it can't <laughs> be that long, right? It's not a long movie. No, not at all. So I'm gonna check it out. I when it comes when it when I finally can. I, I listen. I had a blast with it. I had an absolute blast with it. So I don't understand the hate, but to each their own. It reminds me of is I feel like it's like when Silent Night Deadly Night came out. Just some people are just offended about the idea of taking like a children's character and making it evil. Which are. Yeah. So which is hilarious. But. Well, let's get the ball rolling here. We've each got f- five picks for movies mm-hmm. that we love that everybody hates, but we love. And I, I may I may even be able to pull out a few more. I've got Me horror. Too. I've got sci-fi. Yeah. I've got everything. I know Dave's got a bunch of horror. Peter had a difficult. Peter's got no horror. He's all <laughs> over the place. I have, I, I have like, well, I wasn't sure. So my methodology with this was first was I'm not going with movies that maybe have been overlooked or forgotten. Um, but these are movies that like, when you hear the name, people go, Oh, that's like a bomb. Like that's uh, like, you know, like what that piece of crap, like that are recognized as like, bad or hated movies the problem with the hard thing with the horror is i feel like kind of doesn't every horror movie have some fans like it's hard i just found it harder like to, you know, there's always like a group of people who love you know there's always people who love halloween you know you go through any of the movies that are supposedly hated at one time like halloween three or something and there's always a group of people that kind of loved it from the beginning so that's why i struggled a bit with horror but i'll see how this goes and then i can adjust based on your guys picks too so i have backups for sure there are more horror so we'll but mine, yes, are all over the place. I have a musical, I have a drama, I have comedy, I have horror. Nice. Yeah, I had a, a. It was a little. It was a little tricky because you know now, retrospectively, so many movies that were hated then yeah. are yeah. loved now. So yeah. I was like, oh, so I kind of looked at like Rotten Tomatoes and at least a little ranking to see what didn't seem popular with people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it was tricky. Yeah. Quick question. Sure. Quick question for Peter before we dive in. Riordan mm-hmm. wants to know if you're going to be at any upcoming conventions, Peter. Um, no, actually, um, I, I don't even say this to sound like why I mean, I've never invited to conventions. They, they want you know stars and celebrities. Authors just usually aren't invited, but if someone invited me, I would go. So, yeah. But no, no one's no one's asked me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised they don't ask you to come and like lead the panel discussions for like, uh, you yeah. know, yeah. Cause yeah. I mean, you'd, you'd, you'd be great at that. Great at that. Yeah. That'd be fun. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe when the book comes out, you know, I, I, I think though now, like, don't you need like an agent or a manager pitching you? I think it's a bigger business now. I think like, it's, it's a huge yeah, business. I don't a huge business. Know. So maybe someday. well, I'll go ahead and get the ball rolling with my very first pick. And um, this is a movie that that I don't like. Like Dave was saying, some move. What's interesting is some movies that are hated. Once you put some years behind them, or there's been some mm-hmm. subsequent films made in the series, your feelings toward that one kind of warm. Or people will go back mm-hmm. and revisit it and go, "Yeah, that wasn't bad." Or, "Oh, actually, I really like that now." Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that's happened yet with this pick. And I'm mm-hmm. talking about Alien. <laughs> three oh okay yeah i i love alien three because of most of the reasons why it's hated i love the nihilism of it i love the uh the bleakness of it i love the fact that newt and hicks are killed off screen they're like oh you loved these characters and aliens well guess what they died they're already dead when the movie starts they're dead Oh, and you're going to get to see little Newt get autopsied. Mm -hmm. So uh, I like that ballsiness there. Uh, And I like that Alien 3 is the anti-aliens because Aliens was this big operatic, huge space opera action extravaganza. And Alien 3 is the polar opposite of that. Um, But I've always really liked Alien 3. I like Alien 3 more than Aliens. Um, and wow. that to a, that to a lot of people is is, yeah. is really blasphemous. Um, mm. huh? But um, yeah, I love okay. the darkness. I love the nihilism. Go ahead, Peter. Oh, it's actually, you, I know there was there there was a, a, a David Fincher. Cut. I know he didn't actually cut it, but they did like the directors. Do you have a preference between? Or I prefer the assembly cuts. 
Um, that one is my favorite cut because that one adds a little more to it. Um, mm -hmm. it, it also kind of opens up the story a little bit. Like you get to see what's going on outside the prison a little more. Um, but in that really that awful looking planet. Um, so I prefer the assembly cuts, but, yeah. um, yeah. So alien three is going to be my first, uh, my first pick. I, I get why it's hated. I get why, especially back in the day, if people went into alien three, expecting a continuation of aliens, they were probably really pissed off. Um, sure. but, um, I don't know. I've, I've always loved it. There's just something about it that, that I like, maybe I'm just a bleak, dark, nihilistic <laughs> person. I don't know. I, I you know, Maybe I just like bald women, you know, <laughs> maybe I just like bald women. I don't know. What do you think about her death her dying? Or she came I, I, I loved it. I loved it. I loved the sacrifice yourself to save everybody. The, 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 the it's coming out of her chest and she's holding it as she falls into the, into the molten, whatever it is, you know, I liked it. Yeah. I, I like it. I like it. I like everything right. about that movie. <clears throat> I've always liked it. Yeah. Oh, cool. I, yeah. Cool. I've always liked that movie. I mean, I, but again, it was, it was such a drastic shift from aliens that you're like, wait a minute. Whoa. But then when you just look at it on its own, it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, the only issue I had with, I, I actually liked when I saw it and hate it um, is I saw the alien. They did a lot of compositing. Like mm -hmm. um, and that's the only thing I wish some of the, like the alien itself was cool, but it, it, it I didn't think the effects were as strong as the first two. So that's mm -hmm. the only problem I kind of had with it. But yeah, um, yeah I like it. I, I don't hate it at all. And apparently um, David Fincher will just not, he won't talk yeah. about it. No. Doesn't want anything, don't want anything to do with it. It's funny because uh, the person who did the assembly cut is a guy that I worked with on a lot of behind the scenes uh, disc extra features, Charles de Lazarica. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, it was like, he could not get Fincher. It was the, the experience was that horrible for him that he just like will not talk about it. Mm. I found one interview was like a panel thing and they asked, he did talk about it a little bit. He said, no one hates that movie more than me. It was just such a dispiriting studio situation. Um, it took him a number of years that he just, he just, there's just nothing positive about it like something he can say he doesn't want to see it again he doesn't want to reassemble it's like david lynch and dune i think is like that he mm -hmm. really right and, yeah and they give him an offer to recut dune he's like i don't care so. <laughs> <laughs> uh david you are absolutely correct you are absolutely i love sinead nothing compares to you. <laughs> so you know yeah absolutely you are right on you are right on um dave do you want to go next Sure. Um, I mean, you pick something classy. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm diving right down into the pit. Uh, Go for um, it. Go for it. This slimy slice of celluloid called Slugs from 1988. Mm. Um, it's not a good movie, but it's uh, it's an outrageous movie. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, whether it's the, the translation between a, a Spanish director and, and shooting in the States. Uh, but the effects are really fun. It's just crazy. It's super, super gory. It's based on this like nasty, you know, pulp horror novel, you know, everything about it's outrageous. You know, there's exploding heads and eyeballs and, everything and and slugs that you know have teeth and can bite you know and and amazing close-ups of of stuff it's it's just uh it's a silly mess and it's got a great like library cue like music score that you go wait i've heard that in comedies before and they're playing it dead serious it's yeah i don't know i there's no defense for it but i love it and i don't know how many people like love slugs what well, if, if people are people who are familiar with my channel know i freaking love slugs for all the reasons that you mention <laughs> I, i'm a huge fan of the director uh juan piquet simone he also directed pieces Little which pieces. i yeah absolutely oh. adore and he also did uh what cthulhu mansion cthulhu mansion he did yeah <laughs> another wonderful crazy movie 
Yeah, he also directed a um, uh, like an abyss style ripoff with uh, Arlie Ermey in it. I can't, I don't remember what it's called, but it's endless <laughs> descent. Yes, I think endless that's it. Descent. Dude, I think that's I don't it. Know this stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, I love slugs. My, I, I love everything you said about it. it is I, I love all that about it. The fact that some, it's actually based on a book. It's yeah. based on a novel. Which, how do you, how, how what kind of um, drugs do you take? to make you come up with an idea of mutated flesh eating slugs. Some good ones. Yeah. Some, some good, really ones. good ones. Some, some really good ones. ones. But I mean, that's the thing. It's just fun. And I love, I love those nature run amok movies. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, even like frogs. I love frogs. It's ridiculous, but yes. Yes. I love that stuff. You know, night of the lepus. I'll take, give me giant rabbits. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. killer eating i mean it's just like all that stuff but slugs definitely uh ups the gore factor like exponentially over any of the other ones and peter you would like it too because okay. a little kid actually gets eaten alive by slugs oh wonderful wonderful yeah yeah so i just go. love when they kill <laughs> there you go. My, yeah. fa my favorite scene is when the two are on the bed making love and oh, they're yeah. totally they're totally oblivious to millions of slugs have gathered around the bed until the guy gets, or that's the woman gets out of bed and she slides in the slimy slugs and they're just all over. Right. Yeah. I love that scene. Love that scene. <laughs> it's Great like, stuff. But it's slugs are pretty quiet and, you know, yeah. in the passions of lovemaking, they just didn't hear. It's true. <laughs> no, and, it's true. and these suckers move a lot faster when you can't see them on screen. That's true. <laughs> it's just too bad nobody had some salt nearby you know yeah. I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I don't know about you but whenever i'm making love i keep a keep some salt nearby just, just in case. case just in case so <laughs> but yeah, I, I i love slugs to death well i love 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 that movie well i've never seen it. i'm gonna have to see it now i'm adding it to my list <laughs> and you you're have to. go what the hell is wrong with those two? Oh no <laughs> every, <laughs> every friday we have bad movie night at my place we call it cinema evening and slugs is going on that list. So Perfect. Oh, it's definitely <laughs> like have some pizza mm -hmm. with it for yes. sure. No, ha have a salad. Have a big <laughs> salad. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Have a big salad with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With mm -hmm. with black olives. A big salad yeah. with a lot of black olives in it. For sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're going to love it, Peter. You're going to love <laughs> You're gonna it. You're going to love it. <laughs> and one of That's... the greatest taglines ever they slime, they ooze, they kill. Oh yeah, I know. So good, so, so good. good. And, so we, they, and they make noises too. Like the, I, I, if I'm remembering correctly, like when he bites the guy's finger, it kind of makes a little. Ah, it kinda. does. Yes, it does. Yeah. I mean, they. Uh, this thing's got every. It's got explosions. It's 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 just got. It's got everything. It's got <laughs> everything in it. All right, I'm excited. Well, that's yeah. what you could too for a low budget movie. You could just like throw in everything and there was enough money to do it and do it pretty well the acting's wooden and everything else but the effects and explosions and stuff like that it's like those are actually done really well mm -hmm. they are mm -hmm. they are peter put that on your list okay <laughs> <laughs> what well, what what is on your list for tonight all right well that's so funny you brought that up dave because my uh my first i'm gonna actually go with one of my horror for first I have a lot of all, I'm, I'm probably gonna move this list around as we go along. Um, but it's also a nature run amok movie. Um, I love that whole sub sub genre. Um, it's from 1979 and it's called Prophecy. Uh, have you ever seen this movie? Oh yeah. Yeah, okay, good, yes. It is everything I love about big budget, like 70s echo horror. It's like major studio, big stars. It's like super pretentious. And of course they have to like weave in the native American, you know, Angle. I mean, you have Armando Sante playing a Native American. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but it is really well shot, and it has, I think, one of the funniest, best kill scenes. If you guys remember the camp scene with the kid in the sleeping bag. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, there's, I would say there's feathers. Um, you have Tom McLaughlin who directed Friday Part Six, dressed as a giant mutant bear, like kind of running around, you know. And um, and there's this hilarious scene. Like three fourths of the way through, like I don't remember, they're like trapped in this underground cave. It's literally the longest like montage of 
people looking scared, like it keeps cutting and cutting. Every new cut, it just gets funnier and funnier. Um, and then there's like a whole subplot, of course, with like Tally Shire, who's pregnant. And, you know, there's a big statement about how we're destroying the earth and it kind of the the analogy is her babies might be poisoned by the mercury in the water. There's even a scene where they get attacked by a kind of rabid um, raccoon. <laughs> so you know, They're like uh, a giant salmon or something, that, a pipe yeah, thing that jumps out of the lake at one point. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, and then there's like the scene when the native, the mystic, you know, always a Native American mystic, you know, um, who gets eaten. It's like obviously like a little plastic guy being eaten by the big bear. You know? So uh, yeah, so if you love cheesy, like pretentious big studio misfires please watch prophecy so you know, I, I'm, I'm putting it on my list to rewatch it's been a long okay. time but that that was a john frankenheimer film yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah john and 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 uh david seltzer who wrote the omen script yes there's actually an hilarious on the blu-ray they interviewed david seltzer he does not hold back so on what happened <laughs> 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 you know, those are the best interview. interviews yeah oh for sure and the prophecy bear was the inspiration for what man bear pig for South Park? Oh, was it? Oh, yeah, I, didn't know. Uh, <laughs> I can see Jeremy that. Jeremy was a fan of it too. He said it's one of his favorite. Um, but you know, I in all seriousness, it does it does try to make a state. I do kind of admire movies that try. It has very high aspirations, and I think maybe that's why it's so funny. Because I don't know if you have heard the like, the a definition of camp is the failure of seriousness. And someone tries really hard to be serious, and they don't get there. That's what makes it so good. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, they reach for the stars. They just didn't quite get there. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm definitely... Oh, it, it's available on, on uh, Amazon Prime. Yes. So. Get it. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Right on. Mm -hmm. I'm adding it to my... Oh, it's already on my watch list. I just need to get around to, to, to rewatch it. <laughs> Burn $4 in your pocket. There you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. That fir first time around the horn, we've thrown out some humdingers. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh yeah. All right. So the second movie on my list. Now this is, this is a really hard one to find people who like this movie. Mm. Okay. It's, it's from one of our beloved masters of horror though. Mm. But I think uh -huh. even, e even among fans of this master of horror, when they hear the words, the mangler, they uh -huh. still go, they still go. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, love the mangler because <laughs> of how wacky it is the the robert england character the fact that it's about a possessed laundry press for god's sake i mean like who i mean i get it's a stephen king short story but like of all the stephen king stories somebody went get me the one about the possessed laundry press let's make that one into a film <laughs> um but I, to me it's very it's 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 got Toby Hooper all over it. The style, it's very grimy. Um, the Robert England performance is just one for the ages. He's so over the top with like all the, he's got like this braces on his legs and he's walking with two canes and he's just all, I, I love that performance. Ted Levine had to be like drunk the whole time. Like, like he, he, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's just doing his thing. Um, but um I, I love that freaking movie. It's super gory too. It's super mm -hmm. bloody and gory. Mm -hmm. And there's a scene where this old fella is like dying on the ground and he bolts upright and spits blood out of his mouth and it lands perfectly on the camera and just oozes down the lens. Just a beautiful shot. Beautiful shot. Um I I love it to death. I've seen it, I don't know how many times. I've always loved it. I the mangler. The mangler. Yeah. And you get a, you know, possessed like refrigerator too, you know, for your trouble. That's true. <laughs> Watching it. So, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that's true. That's always good. Mm -hmm. um, Isn't there a moment when the machine like actually starts moving? And, like, falls <laughs> it sprouts <laughs> legs and moves. Yeah. 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 It, it, it actually comes to life. Yeah. yeah. It, it comes to life. Yeah. <clears throat> the, the CGI is, is really not good. Um, <laughs> Like, like at one point, it, like at one point it, it like mauls a guy, it comes alive and attacks a guy and like mauls him and it doesn't look very good, but, um, it's, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I've always enjoyed it. I think it's of that, the later Toby Hooper era, it's the most Toby Hooper movie. 
I think, because mm. once he got into like the direct to video stuff and, and there's, I, I love some of those movies, Crocodile, I freaking love to death, mm. but there's some of the other ones. It's just, you know, you can tell he kind of, you know, was probably just there for the check, you know? So, mm. but um, I don't know. I love the mangler and apparently somebody watched it cause they made at least like two, yeah. two sequels. Yeah. So mm. someone rented it. Yeah. Well, I remember seeing it. I enjoyed it. I, I mean, I knew I wasn't expecting I had a probably fun time watching it. I remember I saw it once on video. It was fun. Like it wasn't, yeah, un, it wasn't bad, bad. Like you, to me, a bad movies were like, you're just like, let's make this end. Like this isn't fun. You know, you want to kill yourself. If I'm having a good time. How bad can it be? Right. Exactly. Yeah. If you're having a good time with it, then I mean, it can't, you know. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, it's just so bizarre to make a movie out of this. It's like, yeah. okay, so is this the one Stephen King story they could afford to, to license? you know get the rights to i you know i don't know but um it's uh it's never boring exactly so you know that i think is like the biggest mm-hmm. movie is like you know i think as i just saw someone i think graveyard chest a little better mm. with all the rats but yeah. i have a thing with rats so i don't like rats and it's got brad Dourif's performance in that which mm-hmm. I like a little more. S- somebody did mention here. I mean, w- in what movie do you get to see Buffalo Bill beat up a refrigerator? <laughs> that movie's called The Mangler. <laughs> okay. I actually think Ted Le- is it Levine or Levine? It's a Le- is it uh, Levine. 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 I think he was probably just thrilled to have a lead role because let's face it, after the tuck dance, like he probably is like you know, uh, it's hard to cast him as anything but a creepy serial killer. So exactly, he's like a hero and. Yeah. Yeah. At least he didn't get the, he didn't have to do the tuck before beating mm-hmm. up the refrigerator because yeah. they'll be like, just get naked, Ted, and tuck it and beat that thing yeah. up. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that's a that's an outtake, probably somewhere. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah. Uh, hey, what's up, Nick? How you doing, buddy? Thank you for dropping by, dropping a like on the stream. But yeah, if you've not dropped a like on the stream, please do so. I'd appreciate that very much. Uh, let's see. We are back around to Dave. All right. Um, I'm going to go with, um, House of Wax from 2005. Oh, yeah. Uh, I know a lot of people really like actively when it came out, hated that movie Mm -hmm. and hated it because Paris Hilton was in it. Um, I really, I really liked it. I was like, oh, this is, you know. This is Taurus Trap meets House of Wax. Mm-hmm. So I really dug the the the, the aesthetic, the atmosphere, the production design. I think it, I, I agree. I think it's a little too long, mm-hmm. but I like I like a lot of that movie. I think it, the the whole roadkill pit that they fall into. There's I think there it's beautifully made. Mm-hmm. Uh, production design is really awesome. Uh, some really cool stuff and cool stuff with the, the killer with, with Vincent. And uh, yeah, I just, I think it gets a bad rap. I think uh, the Paris Hilton thing they thought was going to be a much bigger thing. It's like, watch Paris Hilton get killed and it kind of backfired on him. But um, yeah. And then uh, it certainly didn't hurt uh, the director's career, Jama Colette Sarah, cause you know, he just did black Adam mm-hmm. um, and he did jungle cruise and he did a bunch of the Liam Neeson action movies, you know, and stuff like that so but yeah i've always i've always enjoyed that really cool score by john ottman mm-hmm. um yeah just uh, and it delivers a house of wax mm-hmm. it's kind of has and it's really nasty too it's actually it got a pretty mean streak to it oh, yeah. so, um Fingers. i just remember the the grate and the and, and mm-hmm. cutting mm-hmm. the fingertip off and everything it was like mm-hmm. and gluing and gluing the mouth shut mm-hmm. Was like oh yeah yeah this 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 movie's got some stuff in it and i really do think it needs to be revisited i uh, but i i'm a fan of a lot of those like first run first batch of dark castle stuff that mm-hmm. i think 13 ghosts is another good candidate too in a way mm-hmm. or we've got uh jeff reddick in the Uh-oh. chat he says he loves house of wax <laughs> reddick yeah how you doing tonight sir thanks for dropping in it's good to yeah. see you. Thank you. Old um, friend. Yeah. Yeah. Good fella. Good fella. Well, but yeah, you. Thank you. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Peter. I'm sorry. 
Oh, no, you go first. You go first. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, it was interesting how when that movie came out, a, a big part of its marketing was like, come see Paris Hilton get killed. Like Which that was the weird way to market a movie. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, it almost seems like they gave up on the movie or something like they didn't have faith in it or other than we know you, we know everybody hates mm -hmm. Paris Hilton. So here's a movie where she, you get to watch her be killed. So mm -hmm. come watch it because of that. There's 80, 80 more minutes of it, but those 10 minutes you'll really like, you know? Right. I mean, they um, make it promotional t-shirts mm -hmm. saying that, you know, I saw Paris Hilton. I saw Paris Hilton get killed, yeah. you know, house of mm -hmm. wax. It was crazy. They just, yeah centered their whole marketing on that i mean mm -hmm. she's even the poster girl yeah technically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah um, which is a cheat because she doesn't actually get put into wax in the no movie. no yeah. she doesn't yeah. though yeah. but um still. she does have a great death scene she really does it's actually it she, is does. A good death. she does it have is. a great death scene yeah. yeah i was gonna say it's a shameless self plug but thank you dave for picking that one because that's actually in my second book it's a, it's a chapter on i did some interviews with the folks and nice um yeah i think it, there, I, I there has been a, a little bit of not a resurgence but um, cause it is a good, yeah, I think the Paris Hilton thing definitely overshadowed the movie. I agree that it was a little bit too long. For sure. Yeah. 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 I do think, I do think people have started to kind of warm up to it lately. Cause they've, they've kind of gone back and revisit it and like, Oh, this is, this is just a good solid mm -hmm. slasher. And yeah. that the last act where the, where the house is melting, melting around them. Amazing. So, mm -hmm. so good. So yeah. good. Yeah. And that came out right after Texas <laughs> Chainsaw remake. So things got a little bit more brutal. It kind of it didn't have the joke. There's is not the screen postmodernism meta stuff mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. it's a yeah. More, yeah, really. yeah. I I like Ghost Ship a lot too, movie fan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like Ghost Ship a lot. I like the opening. The opening is awesome. The opening is great, and the rest of it, I was just like, uh, I, I, but but again, I'm the I'm the weirdo who actually like was like, oh, is this a remake of the Val Luton movie? And it's mm -hmm. not. And that movie's really cool and has some like great stuff in it. And it was not that I was totally expecting it. And I like the idea of a, a, a ghost ship type movie, but to me, it was just like a little too, a little too CG heavy with everything mm -hmm. on that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a great opening though. Yeah. That opening yeah. is so good. Yeah. That opening is so good. It was almost, it was so good that it, to me, it couldn't mm -hmm. get beyond that. For yeah. The rest right. of the movie. Yeah. It raised the bar really high. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's a that's a good uh, that's a good yeah. pick, Dave. Definitely. What do you got for us, Peter? All right. Well, I'm taking a risk here. This is my first non horror. Pick. <laughs> Although some people might consider this a horror film. Um, it's actually in honor of Jamie Lee Curtis's recent Oscar win. Uh, it's a film from 1985 that I will defend to my dying breath. It is called Perfect. Have you ever heard of it with John Travolta? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> the, <movie? laughs> the aerobics um, movie. The aerobics yeah, movie. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Um, this is the time when Jamie like was still trying to shed the screen queen thing, right? Um, but the thing about this movie, it's kind of, I won't go on too long on it, but it's like, it's kind of fascinating that there's a guy named Aaron Latham who was a writer for Rolling Stone, and he had uh, made a movie called Urban Cowboy. He wrote uh, with john travolta started John Travolta, directed by james bridges and it was this big hit so they thought hey let's do this again and he wrote an article in rolling stone called looking for mr good body about how like health clubs are the new singles bars of the 80s and uh so they got john travolta back and then they got james bridges to write and they thought they had this big hit and it turned out to be a, a huge flop but i actually think that's a really fascinating i think jamie lee's great in it um it's a really fascinating examination of, of the whole it's really the beginning of the whole self-help uh, plastic surgery craze. There's a couple of side characters played by uh, Lorraine Newman and um, uh, uh, Mary Lou Henner from Taxi. Um, and they're like these sort of body obsessed and one of them's going to get plastic surgery. And there's a lot of interesting stuff about media and um, uh, you know the nature of tabloid journalism. And Jamie Lee kind of plays this health club instructor and uh, she's been burned by the media. And so she kind of falls on John Travolta. So it's the only thing the last third of that movie kind of really falls apart. But the first two thirds of that movie, I think are genuinely good drama and very incisive and for some reason when Razzie's I mean it's just one of those hated movies that people mock and even Jamie Lee turns her nose up at it that's one of the worst movies she made along with Virus and a couple others but I think it's a genuinely good movie so Jamie you need to reassess perfect I, think I heard her talk about it again and she did sort of reassess it oh did she, she? oh good she, 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 she was like no it, it's it's a good movie it was just like promoted wrong or sold wrong or yeah. something or or no she said this is what she said she said 
uh, movies about reporters don't do well with the critics because they're reporters. So they all mm. like it. So it was yeah. that kind of, that was sort of her reasoning is like, but it's a good movie, but. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Cause it takes, actually takes on critics and reporters in a way, you know, um, <laughs> it's, you know, and I've learned that too, when you write, when you're, I guess, quote unquote, a journalist, you write like you can tell the truth, but you can also use the truth just to be mean. Like, you know, anyone can go and post something that's true, but why are you doing it? You know, why are you, um, you know, taking the truth about someone and posting it, is it to embarrass them? So it's a big part of the movie. So um, it does definitely takes on, like Roger Ebert hated it. So it probably means it's a good thing. So um, I saw yeah, it once, so I have no idea. Yeah, no, <laughs> I mean, it has some, I mean, she's, but it actually also has, it is the Guinness Book of World's Record holder. It has the longest aerobic sequence in cinema history. It's literally a five minute long aerobic scene. So there you go. But you know, if you like Jamie Lee, she does look very good in that. So. She does. She does. I, I. That's what I remember about it. Is Jamie Lee in those tights? There you go. She was, you go. She was looking yeah. pretty good. She she worked. She done a lot of aerobics on her own. That's for sure. Oh yeah, she trained for the movie. There's even a cheesy music video: Jermaine Jackson and John Travolta and Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but so that's my non-horror pick. Okay. Okay. Right. That is kind of horrifying. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. you could have picked another John Travolta movie that's way more horrifying, though. Oh, well, there's a lot of those. I mean, yeah, <laughs> staying alive. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that directed by Sylvester Stallone of all people. Uh, yeah. Oh wow! Well, it's very entertaining. Like it's really funny. So like, it is fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, it, um, that's a that's one of those like how did how did that team up happen and i think there's only one word that can describe it and that's cocaine like yeah. how do you yeah. how do you how do you get like you've got a disco movie a sequel to saturday night fever who can we get to direct this thing see what stallone's doing yeah. you right. know like or, or or it's stallone going like I, I want let's make a sequel to to, to the disco yeah. movie and i want to hang it. out at a party or something yeah well, i read that uh, john travolta they approached him about the scene he's like He's like, I love. He loved Rocky Three. He thought that was amazing. He's like, Hey, that's one of the best sequels I've ever seen. That's literally what he said. So that's good. So that's just alone direct, staying alive because of Rocky Three. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, uh, Stallone's got some interesting movies under his belt as both an actor and a director. That's for sure. Some really yeah. interesting yeah. choices. Does exactly. anyone have stop and my mom will shoot on their list? <laughs> Ryan, I don't. <laughs> Ryan, <Stone. laughs> oh my god. Uh, a, no, a, Bob, a, Bob, a Bob Clark film. Yes. Wow. Yeah. wow. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna uh, my pick here, and I in and I know I've got some backup in the chat when it comes to this one. I know I've got at least a couple people in the chat who will back me up on this one. Okay. And I'm talking about the Queen of the Damned, the oh. interview with the vampire. Mm -hmm. Like they mm -hmm. marketed it as like this interview with the vampire sequel, mm -hmm. but it was really two different Anne Rice books. Yep. Mashed together oh, pretty cool. much. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a lot I like about it. I think it looks great. I like, I think Stuart Townsend is a better list that than Tom Cruise because Tom Cruise really played it like this. I don't know. The, the Stuart Townsend list that is more, he's, he's just this sort of old burnt out vampire. He's just like, eh, you know, I'm old and tired, you know? Um, but then he becomes a rock star. And, you know, so mm -hmm. yeah. the whole rock star angle, I think, is kind of funny. But I like the, uh, there's like a family dynamic to the film as well, like a vampire family dynamic. And um, I love Vincent Perez's character in the film as well. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and Aaliyah. Aaliyah looked so <laughs> hot as the Queen of the Damned. Yeah so hot yeah Didn't she died unfortunately not she, long after right? she passed away Before very short out. yeah she passed away yeah mm -hmm. yeah um but yeah i love the music in the film as well it's uh, i don't know i, I every, every time I, I watch it i have a really good time i can watch it more than interview with the vampire which Easy. you know yeah yeah interview with the vampire to me is just kind of i don't know draggy yeah. and yeah. way too way too serious and mm -hmm. you know it's very gothy very yeah it's very very gothy. very gothy it just sort of and not, and not and, and to me interview the vampire is very gothy not in the cool way like the hunger is it's just mm -hmm. yeah oh, you mean. it's so horrible being a vampire <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. yeah. yeah yeah 
Let yeah. me brood and walk along the streets of New Orleans. You know? <laughs> yeah, that that mopey Brad Pitt thing gets old. Yeah. After, you know, <laughs> it gets I mean? old for him too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. gotta do is just you know, you know, just wait till the sun comes up and jump out the window. And if it's that terrible, you know, yeah, there you go. Up. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, but I, you know, I, I know there's some other Queen of the Dam fans in the chat. Hmm. Right. Li- uh, Olivia, I know, is a big Queen of Queen of the Damned fan. If there's any other Queen of the Damned fans, raise your hand. Come on. I mean, I really like it. I've always liked it. I've always lo- I, the 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 score, which was by Jonathan Davies, partially he co he did the score, and then the soundtrack with all the songs mm-hmm. from Manson and Corn, all singing mm-hmm. for Lestat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All and, and the blend of that and how all those different voices just worked really, really well mm-hmm. for him to be a rock star, especially when that movie came out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I agree with you, Stuart Townsend. It was a was a much better Lestat. So yeah, yeah I'm with you there. I, I think that movie is is really underappreciated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I have to admit, I saw it in the theater when it came out. We I don't remember appreciating it. I remember there was laughter. I don't know <laughs> so maybe, I, but I will revisit it. I will take a look at it. I have not seen it since it came out in the theater. So yeah, mm-hmm. I didn't like. Hey, I just remember not really like having any thought. I mean, it is goofy because the yeah. stack comes out is like tells everyone I'm a rock star yeah. and a vampire. <laughs> get me, you know. Yeah. So it is a little. It's very. But the thing is, it knows that it's having. It's being funny and having fun. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then, and then, of course, when he admits that he's a vampire, all these other vampires who want to keep it under the radar, they go after him. And there, you've got the vampire battles and the vampire family stuff. And yeah, so you've you've got there's there's, I like it a lot. Yeah. Um, Chad Lyons fan, thank you for the four ninety nine. That's very yeah. kind of you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, cute little kid too. <laughs> yeah, right on, man. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we got some love for the Queen of the Damned soundtrack. But I don't see a lot of love for the movie. <laughs> uh, so people, people like the soundtrack. Mm. Um, but you don't see. It. Okay, Saturn liked it. All right, cool. Saturn's in the house. He liked it. He liked it. Maybe she have a vote. Like everyone should vote, vote on our point choices and see. Who <laughs> yeah, who wins? For- <laughs> yeah, who- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's got the most hated? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so so far, I think it actually seems like. Um, I think I'm I'm probably winning that one with with Queen of the Damned. <laughs> yeah. I've I've not seen any love for Queen of the Damned in the in the chat. So except for, except from Damned. Saturn. Yeah. Uh, terrible. Yeah. yeah. Terrible yeah. terrible movie. Great soundtrack. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh. Well, Joe says he hated Queen of the Damned, but he didn't care for Interview with the Vampire either. Okay. So all right, yeah. all right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dave, what have you got? All right, uh, this one uh, from 1983, directed by Joseph Sargent, is the anthology Nightmares. Oh yeah. Um, I don't know. If the, I don't see this one getting a lot of love. I, I know it was a. It started out as a pilot because the writers, I think the writers and the producers did this one season anthology show called Dark Room that was hosted by James Coburn, which was really cool actually. Um, and then they went off to pitch a new series, which was this. And then for some reason, Universal decided to put it out in theaters. So um, I always remember the thing that I loved about it when I when I was a kid and when I first saw any image was the poster, which was just the the eyes and the hands sort of reaching out. Um, but it's got it's got I think three four stories four stories uh and the second one is with emilio estevez and it's the the bishop of battle where he plays uh against the video game which at the time because it was early 80s and atari and every and video games were all the craze it was just just really fun and then there's there's one with um well there's the opening one which is called terra and topanga really kind of is like the what they did for the opening of urban legend with the the gas station Mm -hmm. and in the back of the car. Uh, but then they do one with Lance Hendrickson and he's a priest and the, it's a killer car segment. And then the last story, which has got Veronica Cartwright in it from alien. Mm-hmm. It's a giant rat thing. So uh, I just think it's, it's really fun. And, but mm-hmm. I, I don't know if it's, 
I don't know if it's super hated. I don't think it's super loved, but no one talks about seem yeah. nobody talks about this movie. And now I is this the same that. is this the same Joseph Sargent who directed Jaws, Jaws the Revenge? The Revenge. Yes. Mm-hmm. Before he gave us that. Yeah. Which you're not getting me to put on any list because I can't defend that movie. I'll defend, <laughs> I'll defend nightmares though. Uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty cool. Uh, you know what's great? It's a it would be a great um gateway movie for younger people to see. It's not like super gory or anything like that, but uh mm-hmm. but it's just scary enough. Mm. I'm gonna have yeah. to add it to my list. Yeah, you never so um it's like an anthology, like you know, some are better than you know, like more than others. But I remember the first one actually being genuinely scary. Mm-hmm. Um I watched it like a couple of years ago. Um yeah, I'm the Bishes of Battle. That was a fun one. I think uh, actually uh Moon Unit Zappa's in it too. She's yes, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Out. Um, and then the rat one's kind of fun. I think Rat Richard Missouri is in it too. Is in the mm-hmm. and stuff. So yeah, definitely check out Nightmares. It's a fun, it's a fun anthology. It's got a great. It's uh, it's uh, I I forget the is it Percy the 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 narr- for the trailer. It's the same oh, narrator. Who, yes. Yeah, who did the Jaws? You know narration. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and the funny thing is the tagline is like every summer a sleeper comes out. This is that movie. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I'm like, yeah. okay. <laughs> they're, they're trying to make it, yeah. Uh, hard, but yeah. Well, the thing about Joseph Sargent, I would have, like I know everyone makes fun of Jaws Revenge, but he was actually a really great TV movie director. He did some great television movies. He did a movie called in the, the- a theatrical with Robert Shaw called The Taking of Pelham One, Two, Three. Oh, that's a fantastic a movie. Fantastic movie. So he's actually a really good director. He just, and he did some uh, night galleries too, didn't he? Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. That were really so, good. So don't hold Jaws Revenge too much against him. <laughs> Uh, my buddy Horror Orman says nightmares rules. Thank you for oh, the two dollars, yeah. sir. Woo-hoo. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> now I I I will defend Jaws the Revenge. <laughs> I I love that movie to death. I love the I love the 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 the, the, the roaring great white shark that can come vertical out of the water entirely, and you know. I just, um, yeah, I don't know. I love that movie. But the only thing I like about Jaws, the, uh, I shouldn't say the only thing, but one of the things I liked about Jaws: The Revenge when I saw it, and I saw, and I actually saw it because I'm from Vermont, and it opened, and I saw it with the original ending. So with the the shark getting speared on the the mast and wiggling around, mm-hmm. I saw that in the theater before they changed it. Mm-hmm. But there's a moment where someone asks Michael Caine's character, Hoagie, where's the coldest place he's ever been? And it was Burlington, Vermont, which is where I'm from. So mm-hmm. we're sitting in a theater when that, and everyone just kind of like cheers and goes crazy. That was the fun. Mem- that's my one fun memory of Jaws the Revenge. That's funny. <laughs> uh, what have you got for us, Peter? Um. All right, so I'm gonna go with my and the next one is gonna be my kind of sci-fi. I would actually argue this is actually a scary movie more than sci-fi, but it's a sci-fi movie. And I'm gonna make a, a really big proclamation and say I actually prefer this movie to Star Wars. It is from 1979 and it's called The Black Hole. Have you ever seen The Black Hole? Oh, I, love the I don't black think hole. I have. No, really? Oh, okay, I so love the Black Hole. It was Disney. Yeah, it's fucked. It's a fucked up movie. So. This is our after Star Wars. So it came out in seventy seven. So of course everyone wanted their, their Star Wars. So Disney's like, we're gonna do the. They actually proclaimed like this is better than Star Wars, and they made this. It's called the Black Hole, and um, Anthony Perkins is in it. Um, Robert Forrester. Robert Forrester, yeah. Uh, had, like, Ernest Borgnine. Ernest, yeah, a Maximilian Shell was the oh, bad guy. Yep. It's really a remake of Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea. But anyway, they're in like this small spaceship, and they're looking, and they find there's like this big spaceship that got disappeared years ago. Um, they find this big derelict spacecraft, very alien esque. Uh, and there's a well, I don't, I guess I'll ruin it, but I don't understand it. But um, Maximum Show is kind of like he was the famous captain of the ship, and no one knows what happened to him. He got sucked into like the orbit of a black hole. It's the most scientifically inaccurate movie ever made. Actually, there was a, <laughs> an interview with um, what's the guy's name, the famous astronomer? He's always on um, Asimov. No, he's alive. Um, oh, okay. DeGrasse Tyson. Yeah, to, yeah. He literally said they asked him what is the most scientifically inaccurate movie he's ever seen. He said the black hole. <laughs> but so <laughs> it's not what it's really about cool. though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean the black hole looks really cool. So it turns out he was like a madman. He basically killed everyone on the ship and turned him into robots. So it's supposed to be like this cute kids movie with these 
Bebop and, and, and these little robots. And he turns out to be like this mass murderer. So there's literally like these, all the people that now work on the ship have like these blank glass faces and they walk around and then like the whole ending takes place in like this hell, like hellish thing. Like they yeah, at, the, at the end of it, they go through, he goes through the black hole and it's like the last thing. It's really terrifying. It's like, yeah. and he's got these robot like uh, helpers. And one of them mm -hmm. is like this real creepy. I forget what his name is now. Uh, my friends would be ashamed that I don't remember the name, yeah. but he's, you know, Maximilian shell basically goes to hell yeah. And this robot is standing on top of him, yeah. and like the overlord of hell, like this robotic devil. It's like, and yeah, it was a Disney film. Wow, yeah. there's wow. some cool, some cool effects like there's a big meteor, and then like there's a scene when like so Maximilian has like this evil like big red robot henchman has like this throwing blade. It literally guts Anthony Perkins. <laughs> like what the fuck? This is like a PG movie, so it's totally fucked up. Um, like I, honestly, I'm not a huge Star Wars fan, so I would rather watch the Black Hole than Star Wars any day of the week. So, um, but if you're looking for, if you have Disney Plus, it's on there and yeah, like a beautiful yeah. HD transfer. It does have a great score. It has a legitimately really good score. Yeah, it does. Um, so it's a it's a kind of crazy, goofy. Yeah, I, I love weird, bizarre kids movies that aren't really kids movies, like Return to Oz, where it's just fucked up. And you're like, who the hell bring that this shit? So yeah, something so. wicked this way comes. Yeah, yeah. Another Disney uh, one, which is great though, but most people really like that movie, so. Yeah, Watcher in the Woods. Mm -hmm. Well, this is another one with Tom McLaughlin has an acting role in it. Yes, really? Does. Yeah. <laughs> is he a mm -hmm. robot? Yeah. And uh, and Brody McDowell's in it as well. Oh, that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, there's some, there's some... Oh, well, uh, Brody, isn't Brody just a voice? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he does one of the D Bob and right. um, the little cute robots who have the funniest eyes. But actually, there's some love in the chat here for it. So, okay, I feel better. All right. Yep. Black hole. Take a look. Cool. Cool. Show your children. children. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bronson Right Wolf, thank you for the two dollar super chat. What are your thoughts on Vampire in Brooklyn? Mm. Um, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my favorite part of Vampire in Brooklyn um, is when he transforms into the preacher. And he walks into the church and his hair starts to smoke. And he goes, God damn. And everybody turns and looks at him because he's in a church. That's my favorite part of the movie. Mm. Sorry. I, don't um, I... Um, I think uh, there's not enough blackula in it and a little too much comedy. There's not mm -hmm. enough. You know what? To me, it feels like there's not enough Wes Craven in it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot there. It's all Eddie Murphy. Mm -hmm. like any mm -hmm. it feels like anyone could have directed that movie mm -hmm. but yeah, there's class, a, it's pretty good in it there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff on that i mean that's partly one of the pro like he didn't want to do scream at first Ross craven but uh so like eddie initially wanted to make a scary movie but then the studio wanted a comedy so they never got the tone right and and then it was a really unfortunate there was a stunt gun woman yeah. and died yeah mm -hmm. so yep. it was just an unpleasant experience for everybody i tried watching it and I, honestly i watched it but it's just one of those movies where you put on the background and then you just, so I, I know I saw it, but yeah, you know, I, I don't think I've ever watched it again. In that one time. No. Yeah. It's uh that, that was, um, I remember when I, I did one of these, I did a, a bloodstream with Patrick Lucier and we were talking about cursed. Um, Craven was adamantly against cursed because, um, because of Vampire in Brooklyn, because he did, is it, is this a co It's too, it's too comedic to be horror, but it's not, it's, it's, it's too horror to be comedy. It's, it's, it's this middle of the road thing. that's just not going to work. And I've been there and I've done that with Vampire in Brooklyn and, you know, but it happened anyway. Twice. Mm. Cause he shot cursed at least two times. I, th actually, yeah. I think it was, I think it's like three, three times. I think it's like three times. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. He spent a shitload of money on that movie, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, mm -hmm. they spent on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Recast the whole thing almost mm -hmm. completely. Mm -hmm. I have seen the original version, the one with Ski Dog. And, and you did? Oh, look at you. So, yeah. It's uh, it's is floating it around better? there. Is it better? Um, It's more, it, it's like, it's more consistent. Um, but like, it's just a different version of the same thing. So like, if you, it's the same tone, I, I honestly don't know why they change it. it the, the, the existing version, 
it, it's just a different story. Like, um, it's the same basic setup, but then it goes in different directions. So they're not brother and sister anymore. Um, oh, okay. Christian Ricci and, um, and then Skeeter Orca is like her. So it's just like a different version of the same thing, same tone. The opening's a little better, but like they literally use stuff. So like now in the original, it's like a Mandy Moore getting killed in the parking garage. So they took that same scene and just reshot it with, I think, Mia. So it's the same. Hmm. It, yeah, it's very um, weird. Yeah, um, there's no Josh Jackson in it at all. You didn't cast him, and Scott Foley's in it. Um, so yeah, it's weird to watch because it's like certain scenes they use of Christina Ricci, but she it's like the same character but different. So like, I'm actually really impressed with Patrick Lucier because like the way he weaved in the footage from the different versions and each one's coherent is just it's baffling. It's amazing to watch like a scene and suddenly you see a shot from a different cut of the movie. And it's seamlessly integrated into like a different scene, and so it's kind of fascinating to watch. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and if you're a Scott Bayo fan, you're gonna that first cut is you know you're gonna like that first cut. <laughs> so, did you like the original cut? Did I did. Like I didn't. I didn't finish it. I didn't get all oh. the way through it. But uh, there yeah. were things I liked about it. Um. And, and I did kind of like that opening with yeah, with better, better. yeah, yeah. I did, did like I did like that opening yeah yeah. yeah. Sorry to put you on the spot, I shouldn't say anything. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. Hey, he already admitted to liking Winnie the Pooh, so that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's already. I mean, that's that could be cancelable right there. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, uh, all right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna move on. I've got a big list here, actually. So I'm gonna have to winnow down a little bit. I'm gonna throw one out there. I don't know if this one. I know it has been hated for a long time, but I think people are kind of coming around to, uh, coming around to it. And that is the, the Fly Two. Hmm. Hmm. Um, of course, that was the sequel to the um, David Cronenberg remake that just was a tremendous movie. So I think it already had, it just sort of had, you know, eh, it, it was, it was, it was already kind of um, hamstrung even before it came out, just cause it's a sequel to, to that great of a movie. But um, I've always really enjoyed it. It's got one of the best bad guy comeuppance uh, sequences ever. Um, like the dog scene where the adult, um, mm. oh, what's his name? Um, the actor's name, Eric Stoltz, Eric Stoltz, where the, where the adult Eric Stoltz discovers the dog, what's happened to it after they experimented on it. Yeah. Like, like just, Oh, every time I see that, it just hits you like right in the chest. Mm. So yeah. when you see how the bad guy gets his in the end, perfect. Just, just one of the best bad guy getting his scenes in movie mm -hmm. history, in mm -hmm. my opinion, love that ending. Um, but I like, th there's a lot that I like about it. It's not, of course, it's nowhere near as good as the Cronenberg film, but I think it's got a lot going for it. Um, some great effects, like where the, 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 the little elevator thing crushes the guy's head and just, you know, oh, stuff goes amazing. everywhere. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Uh, of course, all the fly stuff with the, the acid, like the, he spits a, the fly spits acid in this guy's face and he's screaming and he just like pulls everything off of his face and he's still screaming. Just uh, yeah. Great effects. Great freaking effects in that movie. Um, but I like the whole love affair thing with uh, Eric Stoltz and Daphne Zuniga and which if you think about it, that could be a cancelable thing right there alone. Cause he was only, he was an adult, but he was only like five and she was jumping his bones. <laughs> That's right. So, you know. right. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. it's, a, mm -hmm. it, it's a little weird that way. A little bit. When you think about it, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's even, even you think about it. Yeah. It's even weirder that the guy was watching them do it too. He had cameras in. Oh, in, that's in, right. You know, yeah. So, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I've always enjoyed that movie a lot. Um, again, I love the effects. I love the, if a movie can make me hate a bad guy as much as it made me hate the bad guy in this one, to have that great of a, uh, you know, when he gets his at the end is, is, is something. And um, I don't know. I've always enjoyed it. I know it was, uh, it had some issues. I think Frank Darabont 
wrote it or he was he was one of the, was one of the writers mcgarris is one of the writers you're, are you are you are what year was that one uh that was late was yeah it, that was was it 80s late 80s it was 89, 89. Okay. Well, i was 86 yeah so yeah. Mm -hmm. and i forget the gentleman's name who directed it but he as well he, as Chris yeah, Chris, exactly. Yeah. Yep, yep. That's was, why the effects are so good. That's why the effects are so good. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. a great Christopher Young score. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. Christopher Young score. Really fantastic. great score. Mm -hmm. So I've mm -hmm. yeah, I've always I've always had a soft spot for it. I think what bothers the the dog stuff is what uh, from the people that I know that don't like the movie. It's because specifically for all the dog stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just too much for them, and I get it. It is. It's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was Funny that had it? that had to be Darabont. That had to be Darabont. <laughs> Probably yeah. that had to be him. Yeah. What were you gonna say, Peter? I'm sorry. This is funny that like you know we'll watch movies, people are murdered and everything, but you do something to a dog, and man, nope, that's it. That's you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that pushes people. But I saw mm -hmm. the movie in the theater when it came out. I think I agree. I remember this is the first one so good. It just it's very hard to follow that up. But it, I think yeah, if you look at it just as like a love story, it's just a great like, monster movie. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. know it's a you know where the where the the Cronenberg's fly is so much more than just a monster movie. This one mm -hmm. is just reveling in being a monster movie. Mm -hmm. Also, I feel bad. I mean, Eric Stoltz. It's tough to. I mean, Jeff Goldblum too was so good, and that you know even watching like what Eric Stoltz's transformation, dealing with turning into a fly, like, it's hard. You know, it's hard to compete with Jeff Goldblum. You know? mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that same arc. It's the same kind of character arc. So that's tough. Yeah. yeah. I also love the opening where the 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 Gina Davis character yeah. is, Davis. <laughs> she gives she gives birth to a maggot. You know, I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm really they slice ignorant. it open and then there's the baby. It's exactly. Yeah. 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 So I wonder why Gina Davis didn't come back for that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I At the director, they said that she was just like you know uh, how she does just literally sit in the in a thing and and scream and die so it wasn't but they much. surprisingly got an actress who looked very very much like her mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. wasn't the other guy though john getz came back the he did yeah he did. yeah and he and they gave him the cheese was like you know yeah your father i never liked him he bugged me it was like <laughs> oh. he's like he took my yeah. girl then he took my hand, my hand. <laughs> then he took my foot you know <laughs> he dissolved my hand and my foot and took my girl yeah uh, good stuff. What and it's funny there? because the the evil guy uh, is it Bartok? Bartok, that's it. Yeah. Bartok. Yeah. So that guy also played like, um, was it the Monsignor in Exorcist Three? Oh, did he? Oh. He plays like he he. You know, George C. Scott's meeting with him, and he goes, "Do you have a favorite film?" And he goes, "The Fly." In Exorcist Three, that's oh, how dorky that's my, my knowledge yeah. goes. So. It was oh. like, yeah, it was like, that was yeah. cool. That is cool. That is cool. I tell you, yep, that's awesome. Uh, what do you got for us, uh, Dave? All right, here we go. Um, <laughs> uh, well, uh, Paymon's got nothing on Heidi and Rob Zombie's Lords of Salem 2012. Oh. Okay, I, I think this is Rob Zombie. Devil's Rejects and this, I think these are his two best movies. Um, and I know people like a lot of people like seem to really hate this movie when it came out. I don't know if people are feeling different about it now. It doesn't seem so. I think I think it's a really weird, beautiful blend of Bava and Polanski and you know, just there's some really disturbing creepy visuals and um the song the music that the the, the lords of salem plays is very weird and i i just like the vibe and feel of it and he just does some really blasphemous like nasty shit in this movie that i'm like all right i'm down mm -hmm. i think it's visually beautiful some of the sets are absolutely stunning i think the witch i think meg foster as that you know margaret morgan that witch that's like looks like she just came out of a cannibal Holocaust movie half the time is just really creepy and disturbing the way it was shot. But I, you know, but people seem to be like, I'm so over his, you know, 
visual aesthetic and everything, but this was like nice and controlled. It was different where it's like he, he, he held the camera and it was on a dolly and um, the, there's weird, all that weird shit that's going on there. You know, she goes into the room with the, the neon red cross. And then there's this giant hulking, like Bigfoot beast type thing. And, you know, that just, I, I don't know. I just, I just really dig the movie. I think it's, it's a weird, it's a weird little, weird little classic. I think, I think I'm much, much maligned. And I don't know. I don't know why. I mean, I, if you can't get in the story or if it's just, you can't get over Sherry moon zombie, but Ken for a blast in it and his part, Bruce Davidson's really good. The uh, Judy, Judy uh, Geeson or Gleason and Patricia Quinn and, uh, and mm-hmm. Dean Wallace all together as, as three sisters were really, I, they were a lot of fun, really good. A lot of creepy stuff in it. Uh, of all of Rob Zombie's movies, and I can't, I, I can't consider myself a fan of his as a director, although I do like several of his movies. That's the only one that I, that I sometimes feel like going back and rewatching. Yeah. Um, cause that, cause like you said, there is more to that one than just like, the usual Rob Zombie fodder, like the, mm-hmm. the it's not a bunch stuff. of rednecks just saying fuck all mm-hmm. the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's there was something else going on with it. Yeah, um, yeah, and I figured I'd pick that one over like Halloween mm-hmm. too, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, which is yeah. another one that people hate. Which I'm like, if all you want, but I mean, and I could lump it in with this one. If all you want is just another Michael Myers movie, fine. But the fact that he just went off and said fuck it i'm gonna do whatever i want kind of thing at least it was different but that's what i like about this that this was not what i was expecting at all and Mm -hmm. and genuinely like kind of creeped out at times with it well i mean i i'm somebody who defends rob zombie Halloween too because of those things yeah i i mean i'm much more in favor of it than not yeah so i mean i i love the whole white horse angle and i love the freaky visuals and i love the opening with the moody blues song and the hospital and i love the fact that you know everybody in the movie is just completely flawed and you know broken (laughs) including Um, including your lead including you know laurie strode is just like she's one of the worst people in the movie mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah but um but back to lords of salem yeah i just uh I say give it another chance, guys. Um, I think it's really, I think it's really, really pretty interesting. It's got a lot of interesting stuff. It doesn't all work, but a lot of it does. Okay, cool. Yeah, like I said, that's one that I'm tempted to revisit far more than some of the others. And and I do like, you know, I like House of a Thousand Corpses. I like um, Devil's Rejects. I even like Three from Hell. Most people didn't like that one. Um, and and of course his his Halloween too. So. And the monsters. Don't forget the monsters. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. I, th- I couldn't finish it. Um, oh, man. I couldn't finish it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. ooh. But okay. Mm-hmm. Lords of Salem. I, 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 yeah. can, I can dig it. I can dig it. Mm-hmm. What do you got for us, Peter? Okay. So we're going the polar opposite of Rob Zombie here. This is the <laughs> one that everyone's in a fucking like disconnect from this and say um you guys are gonna have a heart attack but <laughs> uh i like this i'm gonna go with <laughs> the when a stranger calls remake <laughs> that was that was on that was one that was, i it wasn't on my list but that was a deep <laughs> track that was a deep track I, it's 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 right there it's right there on my list wow <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, the completely opposite. We're talking PG, not even PG thirteen. We're talking PG. I don't, you know. I know everyone hates the remakes. I know that one gets a lot of shit, like that one in the Prom Night remake, and, and the Stepfather one. one. Those three in a row. Yeah, yeah. Were they all done by the same person? <laughs> or um, two of no, them so were. The Stepfather was done by uh, the same director. He did Prom Night and Stepfather. Right. Um, when it's Screen Gem, they're both all screen. They were Screen Gems, so the same company. Um, I don't know why I saw Brendan Strange Calls in the theater. I'm like, it's a total slow burn. Like, it's all like I love old classic like stuff where someone's just wandering around a spooky place and nothing really happens. Um, I know the lead girl is not, and God bless her, but she's not necessarily a greatest actress. Oh, <laughs> you know. Um, 
but I just I don't know. It's, I think it's fun. It's a sense to sense full. It builds and builds and builds. It has a really good final chase. I thought the guy who played the stranger did some really cool. He was on Sons of Anarchy, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember his name for the life of me. I think he's Irish. Um, but he's some really cool uh, stuff. Tommy Flanagan. Really good. I mean, it's Tom total Flanagan, commercial. He was, in, he was in Gladiator, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Was he in that? yeah. Tommy yeah. Flanagan. Yeah. Tommy Flanagan. Yes. Yes. Um, so you know, so I thought a built and build had a nice pace is only like 85 minutes yes i know it's totally glossy it's totally studio horror it's it's you know it's horror for your little sister but i don't have a problem with with that you know um uh yeah i thought it ratcheted up to, i thought it was just a fun i actually don't know why it's hated like it's not great but like people seem to be offended by it i think it's interesting though you know what i mean like they're like how would i don't know so i'm just i'm very curious at why it's so hated i thought it was perfectly fine fun little I, I get it. Every, I agree with everything that you said. That they yeah. took the the opening fifteen mm -hmm. minutes of the original, which is the best part of that movie, and managed to mm -hmm. turn it into a ninety or roughly ninety minute movie. Yeah. And it doesn't, to me, it doesn't feel like you know that like you know you've stretched a fifteen minute scene into a ninety yeah. minute movie. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's 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 very glossy. It's very much of its time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. of, of that, that remake era, as far as the look of the film. And mm -hmm. um, I think mm -hmm. a lot of people wrote it off simply because of that. And because it kind of, again, you know, young cast, like it's a teeny horror movie yeah. or whatever. And it was PG. Uh, I, I, was, yeah. I, I actually haven't seen. So that probably dissuaded a lot of people too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, there's but, no, there's no, I mean, well, the first when a stranger calls really isn't gory at all. Like, there's a couple of shots that oh. people with blood on the but you never see any actual murder in that movie. Um, yeah, you know, it has some really cool sound design. The house is really amazing. Our, that house was built from scratch, so um, they built oh, wow. the whole thing. So, yeah, it's really gorgeous uh, when you see it. It's like an art. Like, Jesus fucking, like, you know, it's crazy. They went the complete opposite. It's not a small little house. It's this big, like, it's almost like 13 ghosts level, like, fucking house. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm not saying it's a masterpiece, but, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a sort of a hatred for teen... Or I guess maybe because of the book stuff I'm doing, it's like, yeah, it's just it's fascinating to me why that really some of that stuff really turns. Like I can understand the problem that remake and people hating that. I can get that. Um, but when Stranger Calls was just like an inoffensive, fun little thriller PG movie, for your, yeah, yeah. Imagine the twelve-year-old yeah. girls watching it in summer parties. <laughs> oh sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah totally. So they, yeah. yeah, they were seeing Tommy Flanagan behind every corner, you know. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but now, did, did, you never see his face, but I thought it was cool the way he photographed. Not until the very, very last thing. Didn't they so use they Lance Hendrickson's voice? Shadow. I'm sorry. Was it yeah, Lance Hendrickson's voice. Lance Hendrickson's voice. That I remember yeah. hearing that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, someone likes it. Okay, thank you very, very <laughs> much. Yeah. Very Verisimilitude likes it. Thank you, sir. Yeah. But yeah, like, yeah, it's really well done. Uh, mm -hmm. The pacing is good. There's some good suspense. The atmosphere is good. The house, like you said, is tremendous. I had no idea they built that thing. Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've always enjoyed it. I've always enjoyed it. That's why I, I put it on there just a. Oh, good. Okay. I don't yeah, know. That's I, I had I'm it on. Gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna that the carry too. I couldn't decide which one. Ooh, and it, ooh. And it, it was <laughs> <laughs> it was directed by the guy who directed it. Directed a lot of action movies yeah, of that. Con Air. He did like Con Air, I think. Oh, yeah. was it Simon Windsor. Simon yeah. Simon West. Oh, yeah. Simon West. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. Wow. Yeah. yeah carry too. Why is the high school still smoldering? 20 years later. Oh, it's so bad. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> Why? Why is it still on fire? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the power of Carrie. I know. Still, you know what I mean? Yeah. The evil is still, the hatred is still there. Burning brightly. Well, that's that, that awful thing. Like, everyone has to be related. They can't just do a sequel. Like, everyone has to be connected some way, you know? Right. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, that's a good one, Peter. That's a good one. Oh, That's good. Okay. Good. I thought you guys would have a heart attack, so I feel better. No, no, no. We, we, we had some crossover there. We had some crossover <laughs> okay. there. So I'm looking on my list here, and I've got um all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna go away from horror. This is a comedy. Yeah. And I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put comedy in quotes because I know a lot of people did not find this movie funny at all. This was uh considered one of the worst movies that came out the year that it came out. Uh, maybe the worst movie of the decade. Oh man. It's called Freddie got fingered. 
and it oh. stars and it stars Tom Green. <laughs> now I loved Tom Green back in the day from the Tom Green show. That stuff used to crack me up. So when I saw the movie, and I've not, I've, I, I wanted to revisit it before the show. <laughs> I didn't have time. I don't know if it's going to hold up, <clears throat> but there are scenes in that movie that just cr crack me up. There's a scene where a character who is skateboarding gets a compound fracture and Tom Green is licking the bone sticking out of the guy's leg. For some reason, I find that really funny. <laughs> um, all of the interactions between him and Rip Torn, Rip Torn plays his father, okay? Mm -hmm. To me, it's hilarious. Now, I love Rip Torn in just about anything because mm -hmm. that guy's just volatile as all get out. I can imagine, I would love to have been a, working behind the scenes of that movie because you know Rip Torn was not happy making that movie with Tom Green. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so, um, but I don't know. I, I've always loved it. It cracks me up. Uh, maybe that's just because I'm partial to Tom Green, or I was partial to Tom Green's Tom Green's humor back then. Um, I don't know. I, well, hold on, hold on. I, I posted. I, let me. Let me see it. And I, I I know of it, of course. I saw Ask, it. Ask you winning. Yeah, you saw so, it. So, so I posted a poll in the chat. Who should be canceled tonight? <laughs> and, um, and you're winning by a landslide. I'm winning by a landslide. <laughs> oh, and, wonderful. My okay. pick of Freddie Got Fingered did is probably not going to help, I'm sure. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But right now, in third place is Dave with 6% of the votes. Okay. Peter has 31% of the votes. Oh. And I have 62% yes. of the votes. You think, you're going to have to cancel your YouTube channel, the Piz. <laughs> so if you guys haven't voted in the poll that's on the, I'm going to pin it here. Well, I can't pin it. Uh, it's, yeah. it's there. It's there. Vote and uh, let us know who should be uh, who should be canceled so far. But I think yeah, does it mean that he has to change his channel name to like Justin got fingered? That would that would work well in the YouTube algorithm. Let me tell yeah. you. that would work well. Uh, it, it, it <laughs> you just put the nail in your coffin. Yeah. Says, well, you know, there's no coming back from that one, man. No coming back from that one. Oh, Lord have mercy. Is there any love for Freddie Gut? Okay, Stretch Burno says he liked Freddie Gut Fingered. Verisimilitude might be joking here, but he says it's genius, one of the best comedies <laughs> of all time. Uh, Nico says, Will Piz, it edges out Biodome. <laughs> But what's the plot of Freddy Got? Is that a plot? Like, is there a story? No, <laughs> I don't think there is, though. I don't think, I think it's just a series of insane things that happen. Doesn't he, doesn't he like, he's in a hospital and a baby's birth and he like swings it around on the umbilical cord with his teeth? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 That's the movie you're getting. He's he's swinging it around by the umbilical cord, oh, right. and, and fluid is flying all over the people who are also in the hospital. And then he bites the umbilical cord. Okay, to, to sever it. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe I remembered that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, uh, listen. If you've not seen Freddy Got Fingered, you owe you have to watch it at least once. <laughs> at least okay, once. Follow it up with it's Pat. No. <laughs> <laughs> I <forgot about> that. <sighs> oh jeez yeah there you go so that was that was my one non horror i'm just gonna throw i'm just okay we'll come back around and if if there's any others that that's on your list we'll throw those out i've got a couple others you should you like like, like um our, 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 our honorable our mentions yeah honorable mentions sure mentions. sure yeah. honorable mentions exactly yeah exactly so so there you go. That was my fifth pick. Freddie got fingered. One for the ages. Whew. Out of Dave. I, I, Dave's, I, blood, Dave's blood pressure went up on that one. Yeah, no kidding. Um, I can't believe, and maybe you're going to have to correct me, which good thing I have on our own mentions, but I wasn't going to mention this one because <clears> I <throat> figured you were going to. Oh, okay. Neon Maniacs. You're like the only other person I know who likes Neon Maniacs. Well, I know <laughs> I know a lot of people who do love Neon Maniacs. Okay. Um because, you know, I, I've spoken so highly of it. I think I've converted a few people 
and they now love it. So, so my channel is a bastion for love of, of love for neon maniacs. Good. Well, I knew but, that. Yeah. But I think out, I, I, outside of that, I think it's one of those movies. Yeah. Like a lot of people, they don't know what they're getting into. Cause I mean, it's, well, go, you, go ahead. You go ahead. I don't want to yeah, take no, it. I mean, Neon Maniacs is this weird amalgam movie. It's like, it's, 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 it, it's sort of a slasher movie, but it's like, it's the first like group slasher movie mm -hmm. in a way where it's like, you have like 12 different maniacs and you never know where they come from. They come from under the golden gate bridge mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they attack, they attack this girl in, in a park, which looks like Griffith park. Um, and probably was um but yeah you have like you have a samurai you have a, a, a axe who is an in, indian right and you have like a, a caveman looking guy you have this lizard like alien with one eye I, I, well i mean let's just you know here we go yeah. we've got these are the that, neon maniacs right there. That's the whole, that's the whole, yep. That's all of them. Okay, They've each sure. got names too. They've each got names. Oh. Yeah. Archer, Mohawk, Doc. I mean, so it's really bizarre and unique in that sense because you just you never see like uh, a horror group, you know, come together. And, um, I, but I, I, and the movie is, is, just bizarre and weird but there's like there's a really cool nightmare scene where it's like this girl's in the pool laying there and then it starts raining blood until the the pool is basically overflowing with blood and it was like that's pretty ambitious for a very small little movie mm -hmm. um the score's a lot of fun the creatures are a lot of fun there is an annoying little girl who loves horror movies that's really obnoxious that's a little hard to take um i've always said that i would love to not, I wouldn't remake it, but I would like to do a version, a, a Neon Maniacs version, because I don't think you should remake this movie, but I think you could do something in the spirit without like trouncing on the on the on the simple genius and beauty of Neon Maniacs. Exactly. No, it's really, it, it, but it it's it's. I don't know. There's, it's either going to hit someone in 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 their sweet spot and they're going to get it, or, or they're not. And it's like, no, this, what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. It's it it's very very eighties, and it, it 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 it's like somebody said, um, instead of there being one slasher, let's have a whole team of slashers. Ooh. Like so, like I've heard it, <laughs> I've heard somebody compare it. They they call it like the 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 neon maniacs. It's the 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 um the village people of horror because they've each <laughs> they've each they've each got their own little job description. Like you've got the true, yeah. So um, and and so many production problems. Like the movie just kind of the movie really doesn't have an end because they just sort ran of out of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, there were so many stop and starts that like if you watch the the end credits, there's so. The, the 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 maniacs are all played by multiple people or most of them are played by multiple people because people would drop out and they'd have to hire another maniac you know and i think it was done by uh, but uh one of the guys who was one of the one of the people involved with Pumpkinhead worked on this was one of the writers he gary, wrote it yeah. gary girani he, he wrote it yeah yeah he wrote it um the maniacs in the movie the maniacs have their for for whatever reason that i get they're not trading cards. I guess they're supposedly tarot cards, but whatever. They have their own cards, kind of mm -hmm. like like baseball players. Mm -hmm. so it's like okay, there's something there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think there's seeds of things in that movie that you could take and fashion into like a new version of it that could be really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I've always loved that movie. Um, it's just so fun. Um, Oh, Andrew Divoff. That was actually his very first. Oh, um, that's right. He, he plays Doc. That was his yep. very first role. When I did a bloodstream with him, I asked him about it and he was just like, yeah, nobody got paid. I didn't get paid. Nobody paid anybody on that movie. So, <laughs> um, yeah, but, um, the music is great. The, the battle of the band scene is. So oh yeah. I like rough. that too, because it does have like some sort of battle of the band rock music stuff in it. Uh, okay. 
Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, they all live under the golden gate. They all live under the golden gate bridge. However, their only weakness is water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I didn't want to spoil that. Cause I know what's going on the top of Peter's list now to like watch. You know. Peter, you, yeah, you've never seen neon maniacs. I've heard of it. I've heard of it. You so have got to watch neon maniacs. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good one for one of your bad movie nights. Cause everybody no. will get a kick out of it. Okay. And it's not like you have to sit there and not talk over it to like, figure out what's going on with the yeah. plot so yeah. mm -hmm. oh yeah, and, oh yeah and yeah. peter the guy um the guy who played paul in friday the 13th the final chapter is the lead in it oh interesting yeah and, and um the lady from uh friday 2 um who gets speared through the bed she's in it too oh, marta cober yeah yeah marta oh. cober yeah she's in it oh, too oh, oh. Yeah. okay yeah he was paul was one of the only people i could never find for chris like memories i don't know where that guy is mm. okay. Yeah. After Neon Maniacs, where do you go? Yeah, where do you go? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> exactly. yeah. Where do you go? He's like, that's it. I'm yeah. done. Yeah. He's like, I, I did a final chat. I did the final chapter. I did Neon Maniacs. Done get it. I, I'm a, yeah. End at the top, you know, go out yeah, on top. Yeah, it's like, where else are you going to go? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, I had a spear through my groin and now I'm running around with these things. <laughs> he yeah. doesn't get, yeah. I wonder why he left the business. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God. Yeah. Hmm. Good question. Oh God. Yes. Yes. The Unmaniacs. Love that movie so much. Oh. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Man, right. I've heard I just never got around to see it. It's that. for very particular tastes. I'll, <laughs> well, I, I'll warn you now. I mean very few jump aboard the caravan <laughs> of courage that is liking Neon okay. Maniacs. Mm. We we actually we have some love here um for house of the dead direct oh, to screenwriter wow. says given the topic i have to mention that house of the dead is a movie that most hate but i love loved it since i saw it in theaters in 03 <laughs> well i hate it <laughs> so i've never seen it yeah I'm glad, I'm glad it. It does, yeah, oh. yeah. No. and if, if you want the full story on <laughs> house, of, house of the dead check out the bloodstream i did with dave uh last year sometime yeah we cover yeah, it we i cover see something thrown out some love for nuki i've heard i've heard of that i've not seen it i've heard that's another acquired taste film nuki. oh i haven't seen that one either yeah. so, mm -hmm. okay more mm. more love for house of the dead wow really more love for house of the dead okay all right. just goes yeah. to show you enough time 20 years yeah it's mean every, every yeah you 20 years it. that movie is 20 years old i think Wow. Yeah, let's see. I, I remember I remember yeah, when it I think it's came out. Yeah. I don't think yeah. I'll be attending any uh uh revival screenings of it though. It was two thousand three. You are right. <laughs> I've heard this legendary. Wow. Oh. Isn't Billy Cornell in that in Halloween four? Yes, yeah, she is. Mm -hmm. Dark water for that one. <laughs> Saturn says Uve Bowl is a genre in itself. I agree. Yeah. He burnt so bright. That he burned yeah. away. He burned away. He did. Mm -hmm. He did. You can only. That's true. He flew too close. <laughs> he flew too close to the sun. Yeah. You know? So, <laughs> what have you got for us, Peter? Oh, oh I had down to two. It's tough. Uh, well, I'll, I guess I'll save it for my honorable mentions. But um, so I'm actually going to go with a movie that was genuinely hated. That was actually picketed. That was called Dangerous and Morally Depraved and. Um, it came out in 1980. Uh, it's called Cruising with Al Pacino. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm actually going to stump. I actually think it's a very misunderstood movie. I think it's a really strong movie. It's uh, really bold and ballsy. I mean, I think people forget, like, this was a Warner Brothers movie. This was Warner Brothers' big summer movie. And they literally green a movie. Like, they let William Friedkin direct Al Pacino as a guy who goes undercover to, like, gay s &M bars to track a gay serial killer. I mean, I'm trying to imagine, like, you know, a couple like, oh, honey, let's go see the new Al Pacino movie tonight. Okay, I mean, literally the there is like, fun. he goes for a drive. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I know, like horror, like, uh, I mean, because horror should sometimes disturb, right? And uh, I mean, there's literally scenes of people being fisted and shit. You're like, I'm like, what, what the fuck? Like, this is like a Warner Brothers movie. But I actually think it is very interesting. Um, because the the sort of rap against the movie is that like it's saying like, oh, if you're gay, you're a serial killer. But I actually thought it was the opposite. It's really about like, you know, if you repress your feelings, that leads to violence. So I think it's actually a really strong message because, you know, Al Pacino starts to 
um, they actually do a very interesting thing where the killer is kind of played by different people. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't, you, you know, so as a mystery that people had a problem with it, but it definitely makes the connection between, you know, uh, repression and violence. Um, so I don't think it's saying, you know, gay people are killers, but um, I think it's effective. It's creepy. Um, has a cool score. It's dark and disturbing. I know it's probably not for everyone. It probably x people out, but I think horse is not for everyone. But no, it's it's great yeah. though. It, it really yeah. is. It's really good is it? Now. But do you think now? Because they, you know, it's sort of been rediscovered. And yeah. Released. Is it still? Do you think it's still hated? Well, it's still some controversial. Like, yeah, sure. that's a good question. So I was kind of going with the when it originally came out. When, you know? when it came out, yeah. Yeah, it was like a hated movie. So. Um, yeah, that was a tough one. Well, my backup was from Justin to Kelly, which I love. So that was my other choice, but I put that on my honorable mention list. So I went with Cruising. I haven't seen it. All right. <laughs> I have not seen it. <laughs> I, I love yeah. Cruising to death. Yeah. Um, that's, I, I think that is one of, um, that's really one of, you know, it, when, when you think Friedkin, everybody thinks Exorcist. Yeah. They think, yeah. You know, Sorcerer. Um, Sorcerer what's, the, yeah. what's the Gene Hackman and um, the, the French Connection? Media. You know, they think the French connection. Oh, French cru cru cruising to me is one of his most complex movies, I yeah, think. I agree. Um, and the first I time I saw it, I didn't get it because, like you said, the, there's yeah. the, the killer, there's different killers. Like the killer kills yeah. one person, then the killer gets killed, then that killer kills somebody. And it's like, you, it, it's and then at the end, you know, you see, well, I don't want to give the ending away, but it's such right. a, it's such a really like, yeah, because then Al, Al Pacino starts to have his own feelings, his own. Mm -hmm sexual attraction and that and then there is an there is sort of the uh illusion that he might have killed this neighbor because and then he goes back to the straight world you know so that's right. again i think i don't think it's saying oh the gay world turned him to a serial killer it's that by not accepting those feelings that he's having it leads him to you know express it in violence so um mm. i think it's kind of a progressive message so it's interesting yeah i'm seeing the chat i guess it does kind of have a growing fan base so um, but it's a tough it's a tough movie yeah it is it is, it is yeah yeah. Uh, it, it literally, I mean, you could imagine like people going to, oh, this is the summer movie. Let's let, let yeah. take a date yeah. or like, you know, let's just go watch Cruise and Al Pacino, <laughs> Serpico, you know yeah, what I mean? And then it's like, what, what are they doing in the background? Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah. I mean, that was ballsy. But, and you know, and this is supposedly a true story. Richard uh, William Friedkin said this that the director that was attached to Cruising before him was Steven Spielberg. <laughs> Wow! Yeah, he can't actually. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine Steven Spielberg's? Career? No, no, and obviously neither could he. Yeah, yeah, probably not. I could imagine like oh, Steven wait, Spielberg. Because, what was the film they were? They, he they were trading you off. They traded off movies. I thought. Uh, well, because he was doing 1941 at the time. Because he did Jaws, Close Encounters, and then right. Uh, and then because yeah, Raiders was 81, so Cruising was 80. So. Oh my God. I don't know what that would just been hilarious. Mm. He thrilled you with close encounters and jaws. Now comes Steven Spielberg's cruising. Cruising. <laughs> cruising. Yeah. But yeah, that uh, mm. I, I love that movie. Uh, Arrow, it, it got a really nice Arrow Blu ray. Yeah. Uh, yeah years ago. Yeah. And you and know, the little connection um, in The Exorcist, you know, the scene when Reagan's getting the horrible operation thing, and it was the big the spinal. Yeah, the spinal, um, the uh, attendant, the one, the guy in the scene who is, I don't know what they're called, um, kind of like a nurse, but whatever the technician is, yeah. his name was, I think it's Paul Bateman is his last name. He's actually, in real life, the killer that Cruising is based on. He went on to murder. Oh, um, shit. Yeah. So like, what a weird connection. Like, he's actually wow. in the exorcist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's out of prison now. He lives separately. Right? Exorcist but, made him yeah. kill. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, he became uh, <laughs> a fucking crazy. Well, I, th I, th I think he was killing during the Exorcist. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. So he was he was an active serial killer while making the, that movie. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I love Jeffrey Reddick's comment. He had a oh. <laughs> ET finger would have a whole new meaning in crazy. <laughs> it would. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. But would he go ouch? That, mm, he might go, Ooh, maybe. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Paul Bateson, that's the name. Maybe. Paul Bateson, yeah. Uh, someone yeah. else mentioned too that the other widely hated movie eighty was Windows, which is like the lesbian version of Cruising. Is it? That's oh, that's right, Windows. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, okay. maybe I'm. But, but love Cruising, great, great movie. Okay. If you if you've not seen it, yeah. definitely check it out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> um, so let's do some. I guess we could call them 
honorable Dis- mentions, dis- yeah. dishonorable mentions, whatever you want to, wherever you want to go. Um, I've got a couple we can, I could throw out, but, uh, Dave, uh, do you have any dishonorable mentions? I do. I have one. I, I, I have, uh, one that I had on the list and then, uh, I swapped it when you didn't say neon maniacs, which is 1985's hell hole with Judy Landers, Mary Warnov, Robert Zadar and Ray Sharkey. Oh, wow. It is a weird horror woman in prison movie where Mary Warnov plays this doctor who is doing it's all female prisoners like um and Judy Landers uh sees her mother get killed in the opening of the movie because she has papers on someone and then she has an accident where she gets amnesia and she wakes up at this hospital which is attached it, the the bad part of the hospital is called hellhole which has got cells and stuff and mary warnov does experiments on lobotomy experiments on on the female patients and turns them into these sort of like drooling raving like, sort of you know uh prisoners you know in this sort of dark pit section of the of the hospital but yeah robert zadar is like one of the the orderlies in one of his first things you have this guy Ray Sharkey playing this character mm-hmm. called Silk, and he's dressed head to toe sometimes in like a it, he would he would have fit right in in cruising with, <laughs> with his outfit. Um, he is the the I mean he makes Joe Spinell look suave, <laughs> <laughs> you know. It's so and then he has like he has a three way mud bath scene with Edie Williams. It's so mm. just out there and weird um and there's something that's interesting and i don't know if it was just because in early 80s california they were doing a lot of construction but like this is a movie that has like a cat and mouse chasing in a in a construction like you know like you know a wood framed you know apartment building just like uh the end of slumber party massacre 2 has one so i don't know what that's all about but yeah uh hellhole it's on it's on Tubi. it's on all the streaming sites i don't know it's just a a weird nasty not super nasty kind of slick kind of not you know made by made by lou arkoff's son or Mm -hmm. sam arkoff's son lou i just uh, i just added it to my list on Tubi, so it, it will be watched very soon and then another one that i thought maybe might be hated but i Maybe it's not. I guess uh, it was innocent blood. At least I didn't think it had. It wasn't wasn't no. loved that much. And no. I think there's a lot of real. That I think there's a lot of fun stuff in it. I think Logia's Logia and Don oh, Rickles' yeah. performances are both great. Their chemistry together is cool. Mm. Uh, Steve Johnson's makeup is really great in it. Um, mm. All the cameos that are in it, like Argento's in it, Sam Raimi's in it, uh, Romero's in it, because they shot in Pittsburgh. Uh, it stars uh, the 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 woman from uh, yeah. Nikita and Parallel. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, I think yeah. I think that's a pretty fun, pretty fun movie. I, you know, but that's the thing. You go in going, Landis is doing a horror comedy yeah. again. It's going to be just like American World, mm-hmm. and it's so not. But I don't know. There's a lot about it that really works. Yeah. I've I've always liked it a lot too. It used to come on like Cinemax all the time. And it's, it's, it's a different, it's a vampire movie, but it's, it's not your typical, like, you know, fangs and turn into a bat vampire movie. Right. So, um, but yeah, I, I've always enjoyed it. And, 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 again, and yeah, the, the, the cast is stellar and, and paralleled looks incredible and, you know, so it's, yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just a real fun movie. Yeah. But yeah. Those were, those were my two, uh, two picks that I had off the top of my head. Mm. And I, I very seldom hear anybody ever talk about innocent blood. I know it seems yeah, really uh, forgotten. Yeah. 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 It really Dave. has. Yeah. It's disappeared. Mm. What have you got on your dishonorable mentions list? Uh, Peter? I'll go really fast. I have like a bunch um, real fast. Uh, Deadly eyes from 1983. Killer rat movie. Mm-hmm. That movie is hoot. Um, a movie called the fan with Lauren Bacall from 1981. <laughs> 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 That's a really fun one. I, I love that whole era. You remember of like, I was Laura Mars in the fan. <laughs> yeah, they tried to like make slashers respectable. So we'll get the aging star. Um, my favorite Michael Bay movie is The Island. Check it out. I love The Island. I like The mm-hmm. Island. Yeah. Um, 
Ghost of Mars. I don't know why everyone. I think it's a fun movie. I don't know why everyone hates it. Um, from Justin DeKelly, of course, who could not like that. And then um, actually, I'm going to go on record. I'm not a big found footage movie. I prefer this to the original uh, Blair Witch 2 Book of Shadows. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Blair Witch Book of Shadows is one that's that's gotten some some new recognition yeah, and some love over these. Yeah, yeah, yeah there is. There's problems. there's problems. They made him reshoot <clears throat> and crap. Like, see, there's some bad stuff in it, but it's core. It's some cool stuff. In it. Yeah, there are a lot, of, a lot of interesting ideas in that movie. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it is. It definitely is. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. What have what have I got left on my list here? Um, I'll just. <laughs> We mentioned Jaws the Revenge. I'm going to throw it out there. I love Jaws the Revenge unabashedly, 100%. I love the hell out of that movie. I'm just going to just just say it. I'm just going to say it. I, I, I got to say, I think that I don't, know how, I don't know where people feel now, but I always remember Jaws 2 being really hated. And Jaws 2 is actually like mm -hmm. a legitimately good, scary movie. It's as good a sequel as you could possibly get coming off of Jaws. Yeah. 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 I, I, yeah I, 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 Jaws is one of my all-time favorite movies. Yeah. But can. I rewatched Jaws 2 more. To me, Jaws yeah. 2 is like the 80s slasher version of a Jaws mm -hmm. movie. You know? It is. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Kids. And Wait, because Jaws, like a good movie, I find a good movie is harder to just kind of just throw on and watch. Like I can. No, because you want it. Then you have to pay attention to it. Yeah. Yeah. Like Jaws, so you can just whip on and have fun with it for mm -hmm. sure. Mm hmm jaws even has his own scar like like you know he's got his own he's, he doesn't have a mask but he's got a scar you know yeah. there's that that scene in jaws too where they're going are they going lobster diving oh yes and they're yeah. and, and it's just they're diving and it's this beautiful and the score to jaws 2 is mm -hmm. better yeah. than jaws 1 yeah and there's this beautiful music playing and they're in this murky water and then all of a sudden the shark just comes swimming by and, stuff, and i'm like I'm never going in the water. Forget it. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there, there's another great shot where Shider's got the um, the metal or the, the 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 electrical pole, and the shark's coming straight at him, and you get that great shot kind of over Shider's yes. shoulder, and you see just how big that damn shark is. And like they're like the camera guys like riding the mechanical shark like on a saddle like mm -hmm. right behind its fin mm -hmm. or something. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, and that one that's really disturbing when that poor girl gets eaten off the side of the. Yes. Oh, the, the, yeah. she's just swallowed and then she's yeah. just gone. She's yeah. Just yeah. gone. Totally yeah. swallowed. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's or in the part where the guy like Jaws gets him and drags him to the boat. Yeah. You know, like oh, you yeah, yeah, on the yeah. boat. here you go. And, and, pulls just... him and he's so hard he rips the. Yeah. 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 Love yeah. that. I Love like that. how we're calling. The shark just and then Jaws comes. <laughs> and then Jaws and he Jaws comes and he, he grabs the helicopter and Jaws pulls it down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love I, I mean I love all the Jaws movies, it, it, even the revenge. I mean it's it's fun, it's it's silly, it's bad, but you know. Um, and I'll throw this last one out there. This is one that um I, I have a great time with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the next generation. <laughs> Seeing Matthew McConaughey with the remote control leg. I mean, come on. Come on. What's not to love about that? And McConaughey's so over the top and just, you know, I, I, I love it for Matthew McConaughey more than anything else. Because Leatherface is not that great in it. They're like eating pizza. They're not eating flesh. There's this whole like CIA thing going on, apparently. And like, I don't know what's going on in that movie, but um leatherface gets killed by a, a helicopter or, or a plane comes down and hits him at the end remember that <laughs> yes, like, right vaguely well, yeah not dead, though. Do, doesn't don't they end up with another dance or something yeah yeah they do, they do. <laughs> or no 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 i'm sorry leatherface doesn't get killed by the plane it's it's mcconaughey gets killed by the plane. oh okay and okay. leatherface does the dance at the end yeah, yeah. um but yeah, McConaughey in uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre: The Next Generation is worth the price of admission alone. And 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 and, and he's not, he's not, he's not like ashamed of that movie. I've heard him mention it in interviews. He was like, "Hey, yeah. he was having a great time," and you know, blah blah blah. Same so, with uh, what's the name? Um, um, Selwiger. Yeah, yeah. It's, I'd read it's really the people around them won't let them talk. Like when you ask them about mm -hmm. it, they're like, "Yeah, you know, um, it's you know. yeah." So. <sighs> so there, there you go. I just want to give props to Betamax1980 in the chat who 
once a 4K release of The Night's Delight went out in Georgia. I cannot believe anyone remembers that movie. It's Mark Hamill and Christian McNichol and Dennis Quaid. Quaid, yeah. Yeah. That it's never come, released on DVD. Yeah. It'll come out. It. It'll come out That's eventually. Unless they can't get the rights to unless the rights to the song now become <laughs> or something yeah. weird it's like not, that. It's not even a DVD. Yeah. So I'd like to see it again. I saw it in the theater and I was like nine. <laughs> Piz sold me on Jaws the Revenge. Watched it at four in the morning, and it felt like hanging with family. <laughs> Not mine. Very interesting. Very interesting. Oh, I have one, one more honorable mention. Sure. Just just on the on the lunacy aspect of the Hills of Eyes two with Beast's dog flashback. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty pretty amazing. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Uh, we did yeah. have a super chat here from my buddy Redbeard. Thank you for the two dollars. She says, "Any love for an American werewolf in Paris?" No, <laughs> no. I, when I first saw it, I didn't like it at all. I watched it again not long ago. I liked it a little better, but that the, the CGI wolf is just—it's tough. It's, it's horrible. Tough. Yeah. yeah. I I like it for Julie Delpy, yeah. and I think and that's about it. I like mm. it for her. But yeah, the <laughs> yeah that those CGI wolves. Oh God. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, that's rough. That that's um, some rough stuff. Oof is right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> do we do we want to? Because I know Max Landis has been talking about his remake of the first movie for years and years. Do we want to yeah. see a remake of American Werewolf in London? No. Nope. Or, or yeah. No. Nope. Yeah. I don't think it's that. How about definitely... someone just yeah. go and do a good werewolf movie again? Yeah. Exactly. exactly. I'd love yeah. to see a good werewolf movie for sure. Yeah. Wasn't there one coming out with? Uh, Shelly Duvall or something. I don't know if it's gonna be good. Isn't there that new werewolf movie? It's yeah, like uh, it's a smaller movie. I, a smaller movie. I don't I don't know much about yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. We I need a good like we, a Okay. We need a good werewolf movie. We really do. It's been too actually long. like a werewolf movie that is I think is I don't know if it's hated, but it was like the lesser of all the werewolf movies was uh it came out in eighty one as well. Uh uh, uh with Wolfen? Albert Finney. Wolfen, yeah. Wolfen. 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 That movie. Yeah, interesting stuff. I, mean, it's it's not a, I appreciate it now more. Yeah. The older I got, I yeah. appreciate it. When I was a kid, I wanted werewolves and I didn't yeah. get that wolf in. So yeah. but I do remember yeah. the trailer with the wolf in vision, mm -hmm. stuff, yeah. which was pretty cool at the time. Yeah. I want a full 4K box set of the howling sequels. <laughs> That's what I want. even New Moon Rising. Give you me New Moon Rising right? for that. I want 8K for New Moon Rising. Okay. I want 3D. Which one, is, which one yeah. is your favorite out of those sequels? Um, probably the Marsupials. Yeah, I really, I really like the third one, the Marsupials. So wacky. I know. You just want to see Sybil Danny in 4K, right? That's what this is about. Uh, yeah, I, I love. <laughs> I, I really. Like the, I like the Freaks one. I like Six. I, I like that, that one too. Pretty, that's a actually pretty cool little movie. I like that I one too. I stopped at three, I think, or four. I haven't seen the rest. I, I like them all. I really do. I like them all. I, I mean, part two is is great with uh, Christopher Lee. Yeah. Um, three great is a very uh, selective <laughs> word. But yeah. 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 I, I mean, I own it, but yeah. Um, and the marsupials is just crazy. I'd love it to death. Four and five, you know. Four, four is like, actually, like an adaptation of the novel. Yeah. Yeah. And five is what, like ten little Indians with a werewolf and a and a castle. In a castle, pretty much, yeah, yeah. And after six, that's when I stopped. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have not seen New Moon Rising, no, Dave. No. Okay, Dave. <laughs> sorry, I can't no. find it anywhere. I've been looking. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's got to be. I mean, it's probably on Tubi. It's got to be on yeah. Tubi, probably. Um, uh, let's see. Jeffrey says the forest hills with Shelly Duvall. Yeah, okay. That's, that's, where that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I'll keep an eye peeled for that one. Yeah. Uh, Nico's dropping another $10 super chat. <laughs> Thank you, sir. He says for no one saying Caddyshack too. <laughs> we d I didn't get into other genres. Yeah. You know, I could go I, haunted honeymoon. Oh my God. Wow. With Gene yeah. Wilder and go to Ratner. Well, Nico. Or Transylvania six, 5,000. <laughs> Gina Davis looks great in that movie. Yeah. yeah. You know, my goodness. Nico, I'm going to, I'm going to just, I'm just going to throw this out there. Nico may not like this. Nico hates the breakfast club. Okay. Nico hates the breakfast club. You, you know, I, I, 
you know what movie I hate now that I used to love is Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I watched it again after like 20 years. He's so fucking smug. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the little asshole. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Christopher, Christopher Lee was in Howling too. Yes, surprisingly enough, he was. Yes, he sure, it was. It was. It was the lean years. It was before the Lord of the Rings. Way uh, before. Way before, <laughs> way Lord, before. Lord of the Rings. Yes. But he yes. liked working with that. He worked with that director again because he did what the Return of Captain mm. Invincible with him. Oh yeah, oh, um, Philip Mora. Philip Mora. Philippe Mora. Philippe, yeah. Philippe Mora. Love Philippe Mora uh nico says howling five sounds really interesting it is howling it's, it's fun yeah, yeah it is okay. I, I like them all I'll you haven't you haven't it. you haven't lived until you've seen new moon rising dave then i haven't lived <laughs> i better i better start living <laughs> um oh geez we've we've covered quite a number of movies tonight yeah. let's see who got canceled let's see what the polls looking like now. yeah uh oh well i'm still i'm at 63 percent a day dave and dave's moved up a little bit to 11 <laughs> percent okay peter is at 26 percent and i'm okay. at 63 percent so Congratulations. hey yeah. somebody had to get canceled tonight might sure. as well be me you know <laughs> Your crimes uh, against yeah. exactly, exactly. I mean, you know, my love of uh, what was it? Uh, the Mangler, I think, I think the Mangler did me in, yeah. And Freddie got fingered, and Freddie got fingered, yeah. did not help. That didn't <laughs> help. <laughs> Whatever goodwill was left for me, Freddie got fingered, <laughs> it went right out the window. Oh, goodness gracious! Um, but yeah, cool. There you go, movies uh-huh. everybody hates, but uh-huh. we love. I'm excited. I have three now movies for my bad movie night. Slugs, Neon Maniacs, and Freddy Got Fingered. <laughs> You're welcome. We'll You're yes. welcome. Scary to watch those all in one night. Oh, gosh. Um, so, yeah. I, you know, mm-hmm. this was fun. This was fun. As I yeah, knew it yeah. was. As I knew was it was. Nice to nice to talk good about yeah movies. for sure yeah yeah it's like it's easy to do, get say oh this sucks or i hate that but it's it's fun to champion something yeah for sure it is it is fun to champion something that's for sure yeah until the person you recommended two seasons like that was terrible why don't you watch that <laughs> what's wrong with you <laughs> i used to i used to i used to like you i, I used to have respect for yeah you. <laughs> so. Oh, uh, goodness. Great stream, fellas. You need to do another one. Well, you know, okay. you never cool. know what the, what the future holds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Never know what the future holds. Oh, geez. Horror Orman. Dracula 3D. Dario Argento's Dracula 3D. Didn't see it. I, 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 will, I will tell you this. I did rewatch that movie not that long ago. I did. I had drank a little bit and I laughed my ass off the whole time. So it is bad, but I think if you watch it under the right drunk frame of mind, you'll get a okay. kick out of it. Mm-hmm. But it's, 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 thank God Argento did dark glasses. Thank God Dracula 3D was not his final film. Yeah. Exactly. Thank did you. Did you see it? Did you watch it in 3D? No. No. Cause that disc is a 3D disc. Oof. I didn't know if had the TV or not. No. But uh, but thank you, Tor Orman. Yeah, Nick. that's uh, uh, piece of fan of the park. I almost put, it, I put, almost put that on my list. Yeah, a lot of movie. people love that movie. So yeah, it is funny. Um, oh, uh, Bronson mentions Wolf, the Jack Nicholson werewolf movie. Oh, I love yeah. it. I love it. I love it. James I haven't Spader seen it a long time. In that movie. Yeah. Spider's great in it. I love mm-hmm. when uh, uh, Nicholson pees on Spider's shoes, and he goes. I'm marking my territory. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Great Rick Baker Wolfman makeup before he did the Wolfman. The Wolfman mm-hmm. remake is kind of really hated. Yeah. Yeah. With Benicio del Toro. And it's like, wow, it's so beautiful. Yeah. And the makeup is great. But yeah, I mean, it is kind of a mess of a movie, but there's some yeah. really great stuff in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. And then there's yeah. stuff like I wanted to put them. I realized I just don't like it enough. You know, <laughs> I'm like, eh, ah, yeah, it's, it's really hard to champion. Like, the thing prequel i tried to watch it again yeah yes there's nothing like particular i mean besides the cg stuff there's nothing like really really no. wrong with it and you've got to look yeah. sort of admire their attention to detail on yeah. trying to connect the dots but 
Yeah. 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 The Fog remake, of course. Oh. <laughs> Oy vey. Oy. Oy. Yeah. No. Yeah. no. Can't go there. Actually, one of the ones I almost put on was I actually really like the Assault on Precinct 13 remake. I think it's actually a really good movie. It is. It's I've never seen that one. I've never Ethan seen it. Ha- is it solid. Ethan Hawke and Fishburne? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And Martin, it's it's solid. It's a good, just a good solid movie. But it's yeah. very different from yeah, the, yeah. It, which is very good. very different. Yeah, it's yeah, it's from the the guy who did uh, the Purge movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, of all those John Carver remakes, it's probably the least cringy. Like, you know, it's oh. not right. Solid. Yeah, it's not that, the, fog, not the fog or anything horrible like that. It yeah, that one's just kind of yeah. Mm-hmm. I've just never kind of yeah sit down to watch that one. Yeah. But yeah. um, uh, well, uh, Dave, do you want to tell everybody where we can find you on social media? Um, yeah, I'm on Facebook. I think it's just if you just look up Dave Parker, you, you should be able to find me. And then uh, on Instagram, I'm uh, Parker Vision. Parker Vision. I love that. Parker Vision. Yeah. And uh, Peter, where can we find you on social media? Uh, I'm on Facebook. I don't do Twitter. Uh... I do have an Instagram, but I've never used it. It's only five years old, and I have one post of my cat from five years ago. But so, uh, Facebook's the best. Really liked post. No. <laughs> <laughs> or or yeah. just go to that post and comment, yeah. Peter. Yeah. Peter, yeah. please post more. Yeah, I mean, just too. Yeah. So, so and that and that's where everybody can keep abreast of all the updates when it comes to the book. And... Yeah, well, well, there will be a dedicated social media just for the book when that happens. So that. that because I'll have someone help me with that because I'm social stupid. Maybe I'll get the AI chatbot thing to do it for me. I don't know. Something. Perfect. What is, what's the book? What's the book being called? Uh, scary movies. It's called. Okay. Yeah. Play on, of course, scary movie. Mm. Yeah. Uh, let me do some shout outs here before we call it a night. Uh, shout out to Twinkie five ninety three Riordan and Glitter Master of Arrakis. Thank you guys <laughs> wow. for. For tuning yeah. in over on Twitch, uh, uh, Glitter Sorry. Glitter Master says Silver Bullet is a great werewolf yeah. movie. It is, it is. Mm-hmm. I agree. Same it's thing. Better book. Time, yeah. <laughs> Silver Bullet's a better book. Yeah, uh, great. Yeah. Let me do a uh, shout out to uh, Hamish Doyne Dipmus for becoming a channel member. Thank you. Shout out to Nico for the two ten dollars super chats. Very very kind of you. Nice. Shout out to Chad Lyons fan for the four ninety nine. Shout out to Horror Orman for the two dollars. Shout out to Bronson Wright Wolf for the two dollars. Uh, shout out to Redbeard for the two dollars. And uh, we've got uh, Horror Orman with two additional two dollars super chats. Uh, he wants to know about Rawhead Rex. Love it. Oh yeah. I, I love, remember loving it. I haven't seen it in years, but I remember liking it a lot. Now, did I dream this, or did I hear that there was going to be like a Rawhead Rex remake at some point not long ago? Oh. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. They've they've talked about it on and off for a long time. Okay, I, I see. It. Mm. Mm. But don't get you know don't get your hopes up that he's going to look like he did in the movie because if you ever read the short story, he doesn't look like that at all. Mm. Mm. You know, Piz, you should do a special on um like movies that have sort of been forgotten or little known because a lot of people don't know what raw head rex is and hidden gems yeah, yeah hidden gems oh yeah. And- oh yeah i've 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 got a list of different ideas here for future uh shows like this and uh and raw head rex just came out in 4k didn't it oh did it uh-huh. yeah i think it did yeah. yeah i don't know if i need 4k for that <laughs> i yeah i have the blu-ray it's beautiful uh yeah i don't know if yeah <laughs> That's one I'll, I'll just, as much as I love the format and I want to own the move, I want to own movies in their best possible, you know, looking the best they possibly can. I'm good with my raw head. Well, you know, but it's funny. Cause I was just listening to, I don't know if you've gotten Martin yet from second sight. Not but yet. They said, um, uh, they said that the Blu-ray actually, because the 4K is so crisp that you see the grain and stuff so mm-hmm. much that the Blu-ray almost looks a little better yeah. for Martin. Oh, well, oh, it's it's like Super 16. Yeah. We shot yeah. Super 16, so. Yeah, yeah, some things aren't helped with 4K. Like, it, it's it's unnatural when you're converting again, like, 16 millimeter into super digital. I don't know. I don't think it, 
starts distorting it doesn't look right anymore there are some movies that when they go to 4k you see the how rough they are around the edges when it comes Mm -hmm. to the damage that's on the print or you know like the the effects especially like you know you see all the strings and you see Mm -hmm. things that the director did not intend for you for you to Mm -hmm. see or those Um, rudimentary the early you know comping in stuff yeah you know mm-hmm. you see those matte lines a lot mm-hmm. or you know like in the case of madman you see that a good chunk of that movie was shot out of focus you didn't yeah. know that you didn't notice that on dvd but 4k <laughs> yeah wow. it's like this, mm-hmm. no it's yeah. just the that's just that dreamy like filter over it <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah oh geez <clears throat> Yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll definitely do some more of, of these kinds of streams in the future. I've got plenty of um, yeah, this is a blast. Yeah, I've got plenty of uh, topics that we can discuss, and um, yeah, we'll have uh, we'll have definitely more of these in in the future, and they'll be uh, we'll continue to have fun. But you always, Johnny Carson taught me this: you always leave them wanting more, right? Yeah. So yeah, for sure. So, but anywho, <clears throat> thank you all for hanging out with us tonight. Um, this has been a lot of fun. And um, uh, let's see. See, this flies by, man. Two hours is like, what? It does. Over? Yeah. Two hours. Crazy. It's over. I know. <clears throat> so let me do some shout outs to some folks who are still here with us tonight. We've got Nico in the chat, Stephen, Horror Orman, Jeff, DJ Forecast, Eric Showstead, Mad Bull. Ross Jordan, Geriatric Geek, Richard C. We got Dave. We got Verisimilitude, Scratch Burno, uh, 1980s Betamax. <laughs> Had a very lively chat tonight with everybody. So that was cool. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but again, thank you all for tuning in. This has been great. Have a great rest of your night. And uh, we'll see you again real soon. Take care. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Yeah. Yeah.